Hello, my name is Not Queen Creeps, and we are currently not live. Ha ha! April Fools! Did you think that was funny? I will find out when people start talking in chat. <laughs> Alright, we're on low latency. Here we are. Oh yeah, we've got music now as well. <laughs> I've upgraded. <laughs> Hello everybody. Who's here? Maul the cow person, Snow Skitter, Shadow White, Cialuz, <laughs> Vanta, Bran Rick. Yay! My lovely little favorites. How do I do? I do good. I've had a very lovely day today. I've had my hair cut. Um, I have bought things for my upcoming holiday. I've bought a belt for my jeans, which have not fit properly in a while. So yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> All right, let me just get the stream up on here. Please let me get the stream up. I would like the chat properly on my phone. There we are. <laughs> You weren't paying attention. How could you? How could you not pay attention? Look, it's Penguin. Yay. Actually, speaking of April Fool's Day today, um, I should really be playing... I wonder if there's Club Penguin Lo-Fi. That would have been more fitting. I'm playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, speaking of April Fool's today, um, I wanted to play a prank on my mum. But... Um, I kind of- she's kind of susceptible to this kind of stuff, so like, I thought she was going to expect it. So what I did is, um... Long story short, my, one of my sisters is living with her boyfriend right now. So, <laughs> mom goes in one of the shops and I'm waiting in the car. She comes back in and we start driving off. And I say to her, um, listen mum, I, I, she told me not to tell you, but I feel like I probably should tell you. And she's like, what, what's going on? And I just go... Hannah's pregnant and <laughs> I'm trying to censor myself on these streams I'll make an exception to this once like her reaction was just going fuck off fuck off like genuine like it was a mix of like shock anger disappointment and then she turned to me after about three seconds and I just give her this <laughs> big smile and just go April Fool's <laughs> She was having a laugh about it, but like she she told me like her heart was thumping. She's never been so scared in her life. And oh god. And that was impromptu. Like I didn't plan that. That was just like, ooh, what would get her? And I thought, oh, she'd believe that. But I didn't expect her to like actually believe it. So now I've got like family members that she's telling just text me going, oh, well done on that <laughs> And it was funny because I made the point as well, like Hannah called her up and just said like, why would I, t why would I tell Queen first if I was pregnant? <laughs> but yeah, I hope you all had a good April Fools. Um, yeah, I, I just got some cool things today. I bought some red panda pins as well and they're a present for someone. But yeah, I'm excited for some tricks, some shenanigans on this. If any of my faves die, um, I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. Uh, April Fool's, tee hee lol. I'm not going to be here for the entire thing. I'm going to be seeing a movie. I'll try to be here for as long as I can. What movie are you going to see? A big brain, big brain. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm glad you're all here. I'm sorry it's taken so long to stream again, but this week's been quite busy. Um, but we're going to do this. And then I am probably not going to stream Penguin Romper again until Chapter 5 Deadly Life comes out. But um, if you guys want to see anything else, I'm open to suggestions. Like, just any stream. Because I, I loved, I'd love to do something like this where it's like a lot of voice acting again. Part of me wants to start up Danganronpa 2, but uh, that one's quite long, so I don't know yet. We will see. Funny penguins. Funny penguins. And just a reminder of the rules. Uh, don't be a dick in chat. Uh, be nice to each other. Uh, don't beg to be a moderator. I've got moderators. They'll do the job just fine. No spoilers and no hints to spoilers. Like saying, ooh, this bit's going to make me anxious or nervous. Or I reacted like this when I saw this. It's just like, well, that's going to spoil the emotional surprise I'm going to get. So 
Insta romper. <laughs> What's Insta romper? Oh, there's the Halloween thing. I could do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Advance. <laughs> From an anime where a dude has to eat. Fi what? Oh. oh. I don't like that. <laughs> it's from an anime where a dude has to eat thingies. Hum. Yubi yubi. <laughs> I've been learning a bit of Japanese from Korori, the VTuber. Snake. Choro choro. <laughs> Actually recommend not doing chapter 5 all at once, considering both parts are much longer than any of the other parts, but up to you. Okay, well, in that case, I will... See when I can do daily life. Listen, I'm really excited. <gasps> I'm so excited! <gasps> I've been I've been really hyped to do this as well, but like, um, what did I have this week? Um I had a call on Monday, D, &D Tuesday, uh I had to do some work on Wednesday, uh Thursday was more D, &D so yeah, this is my free. So I'm guessing like anytime I can stream now, it's gonna have to be like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, in future, just because like the rest of my week is really planned up. But yeah. I'm pretty sure the main character is full rise. Oh, that's lovely. Oh yeah, but the the thing with um I, I've seen like Danganronpa, Insta Romper and all that. Oh god, sorry. Um I It's more just like I like him um, videos like this put together or like the games. Because it's more atmospheric. Also possessed by super demon or some kind. Well, I'm in for possession. I love that stuff. All right, I think we're ready to go. Just got to check um, this notification and then we should start the game, the video, the stream. How have you guys been today? I should have asked that, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. Thanks, darling. <laughs> no, I don't have four eyes. I've got five. Okay, I'm gonna stop the music. Let's go. What was the name of it? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, I've heard of that, yeah. Don't know what it's about. Yay. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing good. All right, let's begin. Remember to tell me if volume levels are okay, all good, all Gucci. We've got the intro to do it. Let's go. Tofa Damaro, a non binary ruler, a fave. <laughs> Let's go! Dangling Rampa. I love how. <laughs> Sorry, I just know it. I love how the Disney logo is in that. <laughs> Disney's Penguin Rampa. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I genuinely forget sometimes that Disney owned Club Penguin. <laughs> I have least one? Oh shit, sorry. Oh sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Ugh. Oh yeah, I did! I sorry, I forgot to turn it off. There we go. <laughs> sorry, we'll start again. Let's go. So yeah, blah blah blah, I forgot. Um <laughs> the Disney and Club Penguin. Genuinely surprised that Club Penguin rewritten's not been shut down yet. Let's not jinx that because Oh, it's so good. I remember it did get shut down. They were like, yeah, we're gone for good now. And then a year later, they were just like, hi, we're back. <laughs> Do -do 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 -do. All right, is that all good now? Yep, it's all good. Yeah, so I'm trying to um, censor myself a bit more on streams because I am aware like younger kids are watching like, um, I do, in my early years, I did have a load of teenagers watching. So if the odd swear slips, that's fine, but I'm not going to be effing and jeffing all over the place. I kind of want to, um, if you've noticed, I've been saying like heck a lot more and um, fudge instead of the F word. It's just to make this a bit more accessible, especially since it's, you know, Club Penguin, <laughs> which isn't saying much because everyone's dying. All right, who's going to die today? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Because who do we left, left? left? We've got Rookie, Gary, Dot, Shadow Guy, and Gamma Girl. Um, 
Plutzy, yeah. Is that it? Oh, agent, obviously. Waddle on to your death. Some pe I remember flipping the iceberg on the last week. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> agent. Sorry, I need to, um, <laughs> forgot how to do agent's voice. Um, hey, I'm Agent. Let's, um, push through the depression of all of my friends' deaths and strive on with my little crab son. Let's go! <laughs> Ooh. Agent, you're back! Where's Herbert? And what's this? Oh my, this looks like a souped up popcorn popper! Hey, look! This clock's broken! It's counting backwards! At last, my plan has worked perfectly. One more little question for you. Do you happen to know how much popcorn it takes to destroy a building? Well, I do. So long, you fine foul fools. I've got the upper paw. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have the PSA HQ to stop. I mean, <laughs> pop! We're locked in! Agents, we don't have much time. Try to find a way out of here whilst I try to disarm the machine. Uh, what? What's happening? Agent, you need to find a way out of here quickly! I don't think I can dissolve this machine! What do I do? The door's locked tight! We can't get out this way! As if by force, I felt myself move towards the cabinet and solve the secret access puzzle. The cabinet doors opened and... She appeared. Wow, Ace! No one's... What? Uh, gonna make it out of here alive. Oh, don't like that! Stop! Huh? Oh, oh no! We've started already! April Fools! I can't protect you, Agent. We're all gonna die, Agent! It's all your fault, Ace. It's all your fault, Ace. I hate- oh, I hate this. Oh, no, 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 oh, please stop! Ace! Ace, wake up! Are you okay? Huh? What happened? Why am I here? We hugged for so long last night, you ended up falling asleep in my arms. I took you back to your igloo, but your door was locked, so I just brought you to mine. Anyways, I was gonna ask you if you slept alright, but it looks like you didn't. Yeah, creepypasta. <laughs> yeah, it was! Oh, that scared me a little bit. Horror penguins. <laughs> oh my god! Guys! It's Super Club Penguin again! <laughs> okay, so for those who don't know, um, me and Yug Yuck, who's in my Discord server, we hosted- it, it, it turned into a joke thing, um, and then we just made it a series. We hosted a series called Super Club Penguin, where we would read um, creepypastas or like SCPs. Whilst Club Penguin was playing in the background. It, it just started as a joke and then we just made it a series. That was a good time. And I spent like, um, I think I spent like six months worth of membership. Um, so we could like get everything from the game. And then the day after I bought it, they announced that Club Penguin was closing down. <laughs> oh, legendary. Ricky put his pocket knife aside and got a rifle. <laughs> uh, I I'm fine. It was just a bad dream. Are you sure? You were shaking an awful lot. I was really worried. Oh, friends again. I I've just been having a lot of re weird dreams lately. I feel like it has something to do with my identity. Okay. Right. You really don't remember anything? I pretty much only remember my PSA and EPF missions, as well as a few of our miscellaneous activities around the island, but... As far as things I know about myself, I've got nothing. It's weird. I remember recruiting you into the EPF, 
but I can't remember ever learning your name or anything. That doesn't make any sense. Do you think it's possible that our memories about you were erased? Maybe. Uh, erased? I mean, it's possible, right? We use memory erases on non-agents all the time for their own safety. Plus, there's a ton of stuff that just doesn't add up. Like that klutzy costume. It, it's absolutely one of my disguises, but like I said, I don't remember ever making it. SCP stands for Secure Contain Protect, but it also stands for Solemn Cranky Penguins. <gasps> oh, it does. Disney freaked you over. <laughs> And the spy camera 3000. G said he didn't remember making that either. Our memories must have gotten messed with. Not just about your identity, but about, well, everything. There could be so much more that we just forgot about. But why? I don't understand why Monobert would erase our memories. I don't either, Ace. But we'll get to the bottom of it, like we always do. <laughs> That's the spirit dot. Anyways, everyone else is probably at the coffee shop, and I could really use some coffee. Oh, all right. I'll see you later then. Hmm? Aren't you coming with? I'd like to, but I just don't feel ready to face everyone again after how I acted. I get that. Right. Sorry, just checking something. I get that, but if you keep ignoring everyone out of fear. It's not going to make you feel any better, you know? No, no, stop it! Go back! <laughs> stop being edgy, Dot! <laughs> You're going to have to face them again sooner or later. Okay. I, I know! I just need a little time. That's fine. And when you're ready, I'll be there to support you if you need any help. I'm sure everyone will be happy to see you again. Mm. Thanks, Ace. You always know what to say. Okay, I like that she... I, I like that they didn't rush Dot or anything. They were just like, she just said, listen, I'm not ready. And they were like, well, you can't, can't be not ready unless you try kind of thing. No, they were just like, okay, well, take your time. I like that. And the text boxes are as fast as Sonic. No, it was my fault because I paused it. <laughs> well, I try to at least. See you later, Dot. I left Dot's igloo and waddled over to the coffee shop. <laughs> Alright. Morning, Agent. Yeah, morning. You hanging in there alright? As alright as I can be, I guess. That's sort of how we're all feeling. Here, have some coffee. Sam handed me a cup of coffee. I miss Antarctic's coffee. Do you suppose we should go look for Dot now that we're all awake? Uh, you don't have to look for her. She's in her igloo. Huh? You mean you saw her? Roll in around. <laughs> I was able to talk to her a little bit. She's just not ready to talk to everyone yet. Let's just give her some space for a bit, okay? That settles that then. Guess we'd better investigate the island and see what new places have been opened up. Well, I already know of one place that's open. Huh? Uh, did you already check? I checked the sports shop again last night after the trial, but unfortunately it's still locked. But I figured I'd check the ski lodge whilst I was there, and sure enough, it was unlocked. Someone's gonna drown in the fishing pool. <laughs> that old lodge sure is cozy. I fell asleep on the couch in there in no time, so there may still be some investigating to do inside. Well, that's one place that's unlocked. But this has got to be the time that the stage is open. Come on, Sam, let's roll. Hey, can I finish my coffee for- uh, And she's already out the door. Well, catch up with you guys later. Sam and Amy left the coffee shop to check the stage. Come to think of it, aside from the sports shop in the wilderness, is there any other place that could even be locked? Nope, I think most of the island is finally open to us now. <laughs> Well then, guys, I guess that leaves the lodge for us to investigate. Okay. I headed over to the ski village with Rookie, JPG, and Gary. Where's Klutzy? <laughs> hey, look! There's Klutzy! Oh, there we go! <laughs> well, he is teleported out here every morning. You three head on into the lodge. I'll catch up. 
I waddle over to Klutzy. He was looking at the cage from yesterday. Oh, he's got PTSD, doesn't he? Hey, buddy. Oh, his scratch is bigger. Ah! Did his scratch get even bigger? Hey, does that hurt? I know you don't want me to worry about you, but it looks like it got worse. What is Mata Bird doing to you? Oh, buddy. I know, you can't tell me. Please, do whatever it takes to get my attention if it starts to hurt, okay? Buddy, I missed you. <laughs> hey, look, there's Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Anyways, I see you're looking at uh, this stuff again. That's probably not gonna make you feel any better, you know? Yeah, kind of hard to not look at it though, huh? Well, I'll be sure to take it down for you after we're done investigating. Come on, let's head to the ski lodge. Klutzy followed me into the ski lodge. Dooby dooby doob. <laughs> oh, there you are, Agent. Jetpack guy and Rocky went upstairs to the attic. I've been looking around for any potential clues down here, but everything appears to look the same. Okay. You're right. Everything seems pretty normal here. <laughs> <laughs> <A crab? laughs> <Klutzy> the crab! <laughs> Klutzy went over to the back door. Huh? You want to go to the outback pond? Yay, buddy. I opened the door for Klutzy and followed him outside. I miss Klutzy. <laughs> hey, you know... I'm pretty sure this is where you and I first met, isn't it, Klutzy? Oh, yeah! We trapped you in the net. <laughs> Granted, back then I thought you were a monster. Thank goodness I was wrong. Anyways, what do you want to look at? Look at out here. It's not like the outdoors were locked before. Klutzy started walking across the ice towards the wilderness. Oh, I see. He's trying to get to Herbert's old camp. Sorry, Klutzy, but that was blocked off by a force field. Klutzy continued to walk towards the campsite without being stopped. Woo! Oh, uh, not? G and I follow Klutzy. What's going on? Hmm, it appears the force field is still active around the rest of the wilderness. It's only this area that we have access to. That's weird. You're sure this place was blocked off before? I'm certain! Rock Hopper, Antarctic, and I checked the entire perimeter of the island during our first investigation. The wilderness was completely off limits, including this campsite. Klutzy nudged my foot and pointed at a crumpled piece of paper on the ground. Huh? What's this? That looks like a torn up blueprint, and a very sloppy one at that. This must be Mana Birds, then. This picture looks like him and Klutzy are underground somewhere. Perhaps they have a secret underground base. Maybe that's where Klutzy is teleported to each night. Okay. I, I can't sh say for sure, but I feel like Klutzy's trying to tell us that's not exactly the case. Regardless, I think it's safe to say that Monobert has an underground base somewhere. Whatever he built it recently, or when he was his regular self, though, I I'm not sure. I'm glad you brought that up. I've been scratching my brain trying to figure out what this whole monobirth thing is about anyway. Okay, something that I'm thinking about. What are the things we found? Monobirth's turned- well, Herbert's turned into monobirth. There were the blueprints for the mull. And there were clues to say we've done stuff in three years but don't remember any of it. So what has happened in between then? It's confuzzling. He's always talking about how he became him and was somehow given ultimate power because of it. And also that dream- that means that, like, the post-events of the mission, like, in canon, happened. So what's happened in those three years? I'm confuzzled. He also insists that we don't call him Herbert anymore. It's as if becoming Monobert completely changed his personality. Yeah, because he doesn't like Klutzy anymore. That's almost certain. Herbert was always a villain, sure, but I don't believe even he would go as far as his regular self. He's also super mean to Klutzy now. He at least treated him with some amount of respect before. The biggest, most awful event in penguin history. <laughs> yeah. 
He sure acts like the hermit we know, with that massive ego of his and all, but he's far more cruel now as Monobert. I just don't understand it. Neither do I. And I can't quite place it, but there's something about the way Monobert acts that seems familiar to me somehow. And in a very unherbert like way- Oh no. Gary, what did you do? Unherbert like What do you mean, G? It's just that certain mannerisms of his remind me of something else that isn't Herbert. But I'm not entirely sure what it could be. I don't really know what you're talking about, G. But I'll be sure to pay attention to him the next time he shows up. And a penguin in a truck outfit! <laughs> there could be a hidden penguin. That's true. It's probably nothing. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. No, no. I'm glad you told me, G. Something about Monobert seemed off to me for a while, too. Pingu. <laughs> Pingu had a Shima. <laughs> oh, I've missed you guys. Jungo, Pingu, Shima. No, I like Pingu and a Shima. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I haven't watched Pingu in years. Love that show. I suppose that's a relief. I thought I might have finally lost my marbles. Hey, G. Father, child, father, child! Hmm? Everything alright, Agent? I yeah, I I'm fine. I just wanted to know if you were doing okay. Well, I'm as okay as I can be. You don't have to worry about me, though. Sorry if this is too much for you to talk about now, but... You and Rory were kind of close, right? Are you sure you're doing alright? Oh... No, I'm not, Agent. Uh, so sorry, I figured that'd be too much. It, it's alright. I appreciate your concern. Do you remember how I said I feel like a father to all you agents? Of course I do. It wasn't just me who felt that way. Despite her name, Antarctic felt like a mother to all of you. Oh, <laughs> don't! After she died, I felt like it was my responsibility to keep looking after you. I miss her dearly, Agent, but, um, I lost my train of thought for a second there. No, 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 go back, go back! No, come on, don't ruin the moment! <laughs> I miss her dearly, Agent. But for the sake of you all, I, I didn't have much time to mourn. I was thinking that! Like, he did seem a bit... Okay, let's move on kind of thing. So this is good. Oh... No! Paige! I couldn't even look at you properly, though. And I lost Paige. That wasn't your fault, G. I could have helped her. I could have stopped her! I won't make that mistake again. I know you agents look up to me. I trained all of you after all. So I can't let my guard down. I don't want any of you to lose hope just because I have. She, you mean you don't have hope at all? I've been trying to remain hopeful, but it's been very difficult to do so, agent. Especially since Rory died. All of my hope lies within you kids. I'll do anything to ensure your safety. Gary, I appreciate you looking after us, but we're not kids anymore, you know? Whatever happens, we can get through it, together. You're right. I should know how tough you are by now. After all, you're the ones who always go on field missions, not me. Still, I don't want any of you in danger. I'll keep looking out for you to keep you all safe. That goes for Sam and Amy as well. And you too, Klutzy. Yeah, I like it too. We'll all look out for each other. That's how family works, right? <laughs> yes. That's right. Thanks for talking to me about all of this, Agent. I'm glad you see our relationship as family too. Of course, G. You taught me everything I know about how to be a good secret agent. You're definitely a dad figure than me. 
klutzy hopped up on my shoulder. It's your grandson. <laughs> Looks like it isn't just us. It appears Klutzy sees you as a parental figure as well. <laughs> I guess so. Does that make you his grandpa? <laughs> what? Klutzy, you're not agreeing to them, are you? I'm not that old! <laughs> <laughs> we laughed together and headed back into the ski lodge. That's my favorite moment. Okay, here's the thing about me. Um, For those of you who don't know me, and like, cause, um, I'm an author. Uh, I do a lot of writing. My biggest weakness in anything, which a lot of you know about, is f father-child relationships due to a number of reasons. It's a big comfort thing for me. So this, this is my favorite little relationship now. They're so good. Gary's so good. On the other side of the spectrum, he did say I'll do anything. Which makes me a bit terrified already. If anything happens to Gary, I will actually cry. If we're gonna build this up and then Gary's gonna die. Oh, I'm gonna be angry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go. Yay, I have music. Thanks again for everything back there, Agent. I'll be heading back to my igloo if you need me. See ya, G. Gary left the lodge. All right, Klutzy, JPG and Rookie should still be upstairs. Let's go see what they're up to. I climbed up the ladder to the lodge attic. The ladder. <laughs> well, come on, JPG. Don't we have time for just one game of Flight 4? No, Rookie. This isn't the time for games. We have to keep looking around for clues. Man, but we've been looking around for like 15 minutes and everything looks the same as it always does. I'm telling you, there's nothing here. Monobird, Monobird's always leaving behind something for us to find. Whether it's witch sheet music or an execution simulator, there has to be something this time too. Well, that stuff was like in plain sight, right? If he wanted us to find something, don't you think he'd make it obvious? I, I, I know, Rookie. I, I just don't want to risk anything bad happening again. Especially to you. I won't give Monobird the satisfaction of treating this awful situation like a game anymore. So we can't be goofing off, alright? Uh, okay. You're right, JPG. Penguin's in love. I like how he takes his glasses off now if he's trying to, like... Not just when he's being serious, when he's trying to, like, rein Rookie in. I really like that. Because for him to do that to Rookie, I feel that's a big sign of trust. I don't know. I think it's really cute. I might be reading into it too much, but I think it's really cute. Uh, hey, guys. I, I take it you haven't found anything yet? Oh, hey, Agent. Oh, no, everything looks normal up here. Unfortunately, I guess we can search elsewhere. Before he could leave, Klutzy hopped off my shoulder and went over to the wooden, qu wooden crate in the corner of the room. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my accent today. Probably because I've been um, out in the city where everyone talks like a chap. <laughs> I guess he knows where something is. This crate's covered in rope. Could you help us out here, Klutzy? No boyfriends. <laughs> Klutzy cut the rope with his claws. Then we lifted the tarp and lit off the crate and found... An inflatable octopus? Huh? This? What? What? This is really good art. <laughs> Holy Toledo! Look at the size of that thing! I decided that I'm not a big fan of geysers. <laughs> geysers. <laughs> We're going to need something heavy to plug that hole! Oh, way! I love bots who come in being like, Hey girl, hey! And we're just like, bye girl, bye! <laughs> Is this... Uh, another nightmare? Before I could even process what was happening, I felt myself open my mouth. Jesus! <laughs> I need to phone this into the G. What? am I seeing? Remember when Rookie taped the eye? Yeah, that's what I thought! <laughs> How does it look, Agent? Any chance the elite puzzles could seal the hole? No, the geezer is way too strong. It's geyser, isn't it? <laughs> I've heard it pronounced both ways. Geezer, geyser. So, sorry, geyser. <clears throat> what am I saying? The geyser! <laughs> sorry, guys. How does it look, Agent? Any chance the elite puzzles could seal the hole? No, the geyser is way too strong. We need to find another way. Affirmative. 
In the meantime, I think I figured out a way. Uh, to give up entirely. All hope is lost. Oh, come on! Stop it! I don't like it! What the? There's no point in trying anymore. Everything you care about will die! Just give up already, Agent! Give up already, Agent! Give up already! <laughs> Agent! Wake up! Uh, hey! What happened? You passed out as soon as you saw this inflatable octopus. Why did they get into the memories back now? Sorry, I, I don't know what's going on with me. This isn't the first time this has happened today. Maybe you should leave the investigating to us for a while. Yeah, you better go get some rest. Uh, alright, if you say so. Kalatsi and I left the ski lodge. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. Geese is the, um, British one. They only kicked Agent and Klutzy out so they could continue to boot beaks! <laughs> boot beaks! <laughs> hey, when we- <laughs> Hey, hey, hey everybody, want me to boop your beak? <laughs> Sorry. Well, Klutzy, I know they told me to rest, but I'm not sure. I feel like I can't just stop now. For now, I guess I'll just go back to Dots Igloo. I'll ask her what she thinks sh I should do. <laughs> like, speak. <laughs> Klutzy followed me to Dots Igloo, and then the things happened. But on our way there... Dot, what are you doing out here? It doesn't feel right to just sit at home while everyone's busy helping out. At the very least, I'm going to investigate with you. Oh, alright. Can I talk to you about something first? Sure. What's up, Ace? I had another weird dream. Well, more like a vision or something, considering I was awake. <laughs> like when you fall in sled races, yeah! <laughs> Break the beak. Oh gosh, are you alright? I'm fine, yeah. I just don't understand why it keeps happening. You said you feel like it has to do with your identity, right? Maybe your subconscious is attempting to remember things about yourself. The inflection went really weird there. <laughs> I suppose, but nothing about any of the things I've seen in my dreams seems familiar to me. Well, all that matters to me is that you're okay. I'm sure your dreams might be important to figuring out your identity, but I'd rather you not go through something like this again. Thanks, Dot. Anyway, JPG and Rookie told me I should try to get some rest. No offense to the boys, but going to sleep right now just sounds like an open invitation for more nightmares. Mares. <laughs> I think you should probably try to do something else to get all that weird stuff off your mind before you go to sleep. Yeah, you're right. Let's investigate some more then. We need to find the Dark Cry that's been harassing you. Me and my friends watched the Dark Cry movie the other week. And I forgot how weirdly paced it is. It's one of my favorites, but I'm just there. It's like, what is happening in it? Like, nothing makes sense. Are you sure? That might just stress you out even more. The only other place left to check is the stage. I think I'll be okay. All right, but if you want to call it quits, just let me know. Doc, Klutzy, and I headed over to the plaza together. Sure enough, the stage was unlocked. Yay! What's the music? Yeah! <laughs> I guess this place is finally open. I wonder what all's in... Oh my gosh, Dot! There you are! We were all worried about you last night. Oh, she looks so cute! Uh, um... Give her some space, Amy. Sorry, I was just... Well, I was really worried about you, Dot. The way you were acting the past few days was kind of concerning, you know? Y yeah, I know. I... I'm... Dot looked at me, unsure of what to say. I gave her a quick reassuring smile. Klutzy also provided a few clicks of support. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I was scared to trust anyone. And instead of being honest, I acted all tough. I think I'm ready to start working with all of you again. If you can forgive me. Oh, Dot! Of course we forgive you! I figured it was just an act. Us actors can kind of detect that sort of thing, you know? Anyways, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yay! See? I told you everyone would be happy to see you again. 
Thanks, guys. But I still worry the ever agents won't forgive me as easily. Gary would forgive you, come on. I'm sure they will. For now, though, let's just focus on investigating the stage. We've pretty much checked every nook and cranny already, and it doesn't look like much has changed. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that's different is the stage itself. The last I remember, Quest for the Golden Puffalo was showing, but it looks like all the decorations are taken down. Well, if anyone knows the ins and outs of the stage, it's probably you two. Alright, guess we can search elsewhere then. Wait, Dot! Sam and I were gonna perform some stuff just for fun! And we'd really like you to join us to see that amazing disguise skill of yours in action! Uh, okay. I guess I could try. That's the spirit! Check out the costume trunk and find something to put on! You can join us too, Agent! We opened up the costume trunk and searched for costumes to wear. Hmm, let's see. Lime green paint, a referee jersey, and a whistle? Jeez, whatever character this costume's for must be really boring. Okay. Eventually, I settled on a sheep costume. I think this is the Big Bad Wool character from Fairy Fables? I remember wearing, um, Amy's outfit, <laughs> like, years back on Club Penguin, that's adorable. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm a little sheep. Bah. <laughs> Let's wear the tie as well! We spent some time acting together. We weren't really following a script. I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. Luckily, Sam and Amy are really supportive, and they always know how to ad-lib. Squid, got squid dot, what will you do? God. Hey, not bad. Your secret agents are better at acting than I thought. <coughs> Klutzy ran toward us, us, giving us an applause of clicks. Oh, this is cute. And accidentally ran into a crate, causing it to wobble over. Oh, poor baby. <gasps> no! <coughs> no! No, 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 Klutzy! Oh, phew. <laughs> that scared me. Gotcha! Phew, that was a close one. Well, that just scared me a bit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thanks, you two. You've got to be more careful, Klutzy. Buddy. That was amazing! For a second there, I almost thought you guys were real superheroes. <laughs> well, we can put on a pretty convincing act, don't you think? I'll say, you guys were great. Especially you, Amy. What? You... You really think so? Oh? Yeah! I mean, Sam was great too, of course, but something about the way you performed really resonated with me. Sounds about right. Amy's been in the theater a bit longer than me, after all. Really? I just kind of assumed you guys joined together. Yep. Before I was an actor, I was actually a reporter for the Club Penguin Times. What?! Sam interviewed me one day about one of my plays, and he was so enamored by the stage that he decided to join. We've been a dynamic duo ever since. I think... Is that part of the law? Because I think I vaguely remember that. I might be confusing it with Pan Panfu. Oh my god, Panfu Rumpa would be amazing. <laughs> I was gonna say! Amy's got a crush. <laughs> well, I support it. Lesbian penguins all the way. <laughs> Part of a comic? Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, the report of life wasn't for me. Deep down, I'm a man of action. Trauma. And or some other third thing, probably. <laughs> I see. Well, I think it's good that you found passion elsewhere. With your skills as a reporter, you'd probably make for a pretty good playwright, too. Beak booping. <laughs> Let me you should mention, Sam and I have actually been working on writing our own play. Well, we were at least before all of this happened. It was going to be a crossover between the Penguins at Time For God and the Horning, Haunting of the Viking Opera. We called it the Vikings at Time For God. Oh, woo? <laughs> that sounds like an awesome idea. I hope you guys get to finish working on it someday. Daughter's two flippers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someday. Anyway, you, you guys want to see something? Look at this. Sam moved the curtain to reveal a yellow puffle bed. Oh, it's Keeper's little bed. Keeper? Oh, the puffle, yeah. The keeper at the stage. A yellow puffle that made its home here. 
The Keeper always tends to make a cameo in our plays. Oh yeah, the Keeper helped me with one of my field missions one time. They're really good at sculpting. I remember Keepa. <laughs> well, you probably know Yellow Puffles. If it's a form of art, they're probably good at it. Indeed. It makes me miss Chirp. Who's Chirp? Chirp's the Yellow Puffle that, wor that we work with in the EPF. She can use her flute to break glass and disrupt machines. Huh. Didn't know you guys work with Puffles, too. I guess agents and actors are a bit more in common than we thought. Hi! Hey, yeah! I guess we do! Ah! Oh, baby! I don't know what's up with him and Puffle Bets. He's a Puffle in disguise. <laughs> he looks so cozy in it! No! Oh, that's why it's night time. He's sleepy. Oh, you can go to sleep, Klutzy. Attention! If you can hear this message, it means you're a stupid idiot and you're probably gonna die soon! <laughs> oh, and uh, it's also night time now. Good night! <laughs> After Waterbird's announcement, Klutzy was teleported away for the night. Man, I didn't realize it was night time already. I guess time really does play when you're having fun, huh? Fair enough. You have no idea. Anyway, we probably we should probably all get some sleep. Good night, everyone. Bye. You ruined the cute crap. We left the stage and headed to our igloos. La la la. Hey Ace, uh, thanks for helping me feel better enough to hang out with Sam and Amy. That was a lot of fun. No problem. I'm really proud of you for facing the others again. Oh, mother's home. <laughs> hey. Hey! Yeah, I'm streaming right now. Alright. You're too nice. I really was dumb for not trusting you earlier. I earlier. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going a little bit British. <laughs> Anyways, how are you feeling? Do you want to stay at my igloo again tonight? No, I'll think I'll be okay. I'm in a much better mood. That's good to hear. But I'll leave my door unlocked just in case you need anything during the night, alright? You don't have to do that. Really, I'll be okay. If you insist. Oh, and by the way, I'd like you to meet me at the mine tomorrow morning. There's something I want to show you. Okay. What is it? Oh, um, alright. Sounds like a plan. Or sounds like a plan. Good night, Ace. Okay. It feels like it's been an eternity since the last time I've been in my own igloo. So much has happened. Since then, we've lost Frankie, Cadence, and Rory. Who are these weird nightmares I, keep ha I kept having? I had no idea what they could be trying to tell me. But I shouldn't be thinking about those right before I go to sleep. Besides, I think things are finally looking up. Well, now you've jinxed it. Obscure clip penguin characters with a confirmed gender and non-binary now, too. <laughs> as a treat. Yay, as a treat. I started thinking about all the good things that happened today and drifted off to sleep. Snooze. Okay, I can kind of relate to Agent right now, just stress dreams all the time. <laughs> Planning this trip has been awful. <laughs> well, not awful, but just like, just panicking and figuring out what to do. Ding dong, bing bong, time to sing a song. Yeah, it's technically every penguin's on binary. Well, <coughs> well, I choked to death. <laughs> well, I made it through the night without any weird dreams. I guess that's a good thing. Anyways, Dot wanted me to meet her at the mine, so I'd better head over there. I wonder if she wants to show me. I don't know. Morning, Ace. I love this outfit. Uh, good morning. Why did you want me to come here? Remember when you asked me if I found anything while we were investigating the tunnels a couple of days ago? Yeah, you didn't tell me whether or not you did, though. Yeah, well, you see, I kind of did find something. What? Well, why didn't you say so? Look, I didn't know whether or not it was a good idea to tell anyone else about it then. Anyways, I'm ready to show you now. I grabbed a hard hat for you, by the way. You probably should have worn this the last time you went down here, you know? Thanks. Aw, now I'll be protected in case something whacks me in the back of the head again. Right then, let's get moving. Oh yeah, the robots. 
They're around now, that's gonna be interesting. Hey, wait a minute, do you really need to bring a jackhammer? Th this jackhammer saved your rum plast, I remembered. Yeah, and it was also used for murder! I can never look at a jackhammer the same way again! I get it, but we may end up needing it. Better safe than sorry, right? And if we do need it, I'll be the one to use it, okay? Thanks. I hope I never have to use a jackhammer again. Okay. After that was settled, Don and I got into our minecart together. She steered us down a tunnel I didn't even go into before. Ooh, hello. This is the place. Jeez, these tunnels are creepy. Anyways, what did you find down here? Take a look over there. Dot took me over to a familiar looking machine sitting on the ground. Hey, hold on. I recognize this. This is G's Robo Locator. That's right, Ace. I'm not sure what it's doing this deep underground, though. Let me take a closer look at this thing. I turned the device on and took a look at the screen. Ooh. Wheelbot, status stationary, charge 92.1%. Location, the gadget room. Snowbot, status stationary, charge 92.1%. Location, the wilderness. Jetbot, status active, charge 100%. The location is in the mine tunnels. And it was the wheel bot that Klutzy's been speaking to. Okay. Well, this is a little bit sussy. Let me just plug this in. Right. Now I'm a little bit spooked. Huh? 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 Ooh! Okay. Tuffy, you're not improving in this. Like, these are all really good. The test bots? But we deactivated them two years ago. Indeed, we did. Someone must have reactivated them. Oh, it's two years, not three, sorry. Do you think the test bots have something to do with us all being trapped here? It's pretty likely. I don't think the Robo Locator would be hidden in the deep underground if it weren't important. <laughs> also, take a look at the locations of each robot. The Wheel and Snow Robot are in the Gadget Room in the Wilderness, both of which we currently don't have access to. Is it possible that they're planning something while we can't reach them? What could they be up to? Why are they doing this to us? They're robots, Ace! They do what their programming tells them to do. But wouldn't... Who would program them to do this? Surely G would... Would he? I don't think it's G. He's too smart to leave behind a clue like that that leads back to him. But you're on the right track. There has to be someone behind this. When the robot is sus. There has to be a mastermind behind this entire killing game. Oh, God. Ooh, that's like opened up now. Yeah, because they said that they said there's a higher up. And we still haven't figured out who the traitor is. I'm still bargaining that it's... Either Gary or Jetpack Guy. I'm kind of leaning towards Gary only because, like, if all the robots are a bite, it can't a bite about. It kind of makes sense that it's him, but I don't know. A, a mastermind? You mean the traitor that Monobert was talking about? I don't know. He said the traitor was forced to work with him, right? Wouldn't that mean they're not the one behind all this? Yeah, I think it's either Gary or Jetpack Guy. Or it could be Rookie. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if it was. I guess so, yeah. But does that mean that the mastermind is just Monobert? It's hard to say. We need to learn more about Monobert first. In this chapter, I don't cringe looking back at everything. Aw, that's cute. <laughs> Maybe the robot locator can give us a clue? Do you remember what these percentages were the last time you were down here? The wheel and snowbot were about halfway charged, and Jetbot was still fully charged and active. Wait, Jetbot was active last time? Uh, yeah. Dot! Don't you realize what that means? The one that attacked me was... Hello! <laughs> Target secured. Preparing attack. Uh-oh. Oh no! These things are trouble, but as far as I can remember, they should be relatively harmless. Get down! Oh, laser eyes. 
Target missed. Recharging lasers. Quick! Get behind that rock! Oh god. So relatively harmless, huh? Okay, so maybe it's got some laser ice now. Big whoop! We gotta stop that thing! How are we gonna do that? We don't have the elite puffles! We don't have the robotomy gadget! No, we have a jackhammer. Are you nuts? For all we know, that bucket of bolts could technically be another participant! We could get executed if we destroy it! Oh, you're right. It's not worth the risk. We're just gonna have to make a run for it. Ace, wait! Uh-oh. Ska- uh, what's that? I'm gonna translate the first, like, two, three words, and if there's no correlation, that's fine, but... That could have some secrets! Alright, it is... <laughs> Just gonna say something, you lost the game. That has a key symbol as well. Hmm. I'm a little bit sussier. E. Um. G. C. Okay, so it's, um. It's cool code. Cool code. I. Sorry, I'm just skipping ahead a second. I. J. Yeah, this is code. Alright. Well, we will translate that later. Target identified as question mark, question mark, question mark. Code name agent, non-binary, ultimate secret agent, preparing to do something. God, it's getting dramatic now. Preparing to destroy. Ah! Stay back! Ooh, that's a question. Target identified as dot, codename D, female, ultimate disguise gal, not agent, shutting down attack systems. What the? Not agent? So they want to kill me? It doesn't seem to want to attack me for some reason. Y you mean it only wants to get me? What did I do? It's probably got something to do with your identity. Looks like even that robot doesn't know who you really are. The robot trying to kill you acknowledges your gender, I was gonna say! Yeah! At least it's trans-inclusive. Well, I respect it, in a way. <laughs> great, oh, just great! Right when I thought everything was finally starting to go okay! Hey, it is gonna be alright, Ace! We're gonna get out of here! But how?! That robot's got scanners out the wazoo! There's no way it won't notice me! True, but it only wants to attack you, right? Uh, yeah. That's kind of the problem, Dot. Exactly. Then we'll just have to make you not be you. I was gonna switch clothes. And you lost me. It's simple. Just put this on. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> she just had that. <laughs> How in the world do you carry that thing around? Oh, please. Under normal circumstances, I have three two disguises on me at all times. Just this one? This is nothing. I will never understand how your talent works. <laughs> well, a disguise gal never reveals her secrets. Unable to locate agent, increasing sensor range. But I may have to give you a quick crash course. Harry, put this on! I put the klutzy costume on. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> is Jetbot really not gonna notice me now just because I'm wearing this silly thing? not. It takes more than just wearing the costume. In order to have a fun fully convincing disguise, you've got to act like what you're trying to imitate, too. Act? Let me put it this way. What do crabs like to do? Rub their weird antenna eye thingies against your face? Yeah, exact- Wait, what? No! They like to click their claws around! Lucky for you, I have a flipbook on me for full various claw clicking positions. I use it to practice imitating Klutzy. Walk like a crab one on one. Where do you carry all this stuff? Don't question it. Anyways, try to mimic the pictures in the flipbook, and you'll have a convincing crab disguise in no time. Okay. Oh, we're gonna watch you see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we become crab. It me, klutzy. That should do the trick. Ah, she's clapping, that's cute. <laughs> d d did I do it? 
Is it working? Well, naturally, a disguise expert like me can see right through you. But it should be enough to fool that jetbot. Okay. I cautiously stepped out from behind the rock. Oh! Target approaching. Target identified as Club Penguin's Krabus, not agent shutting down attack systems. Okay. Reject Penguin life and Reese Crawford. It worked! Now's our chance to get the heck out of here! Okay. We ran back to our minecart and quickly left for the tunnels. How much time do we have? 13 minutes. Oh, it's getting there. That was a close one. What was that robot doing down there? We can ask G if he knows anything about it later. All that matters to me right now is that you're safe. I guess, but what if Jetbot comes after us? Well, it only tried to attack you when you went into its turf. I think you'll be safe as long as you don't go down there again. I adore Agent Dosa now. Yeah, they're like siblings. It's cute. I'm sorry I dragged you into this mess, Ace. I thought showing you the robo locator would be important. It was important, Dot. It might not have made any sense right now, but we're finally starting to put together the pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. Anyways, this costume's really stuffy. I don't know how you wore it for so long. Eh, you get used to it. Let's get out of here, huh? Let's go. Dodd and I left the mine, but we ran into someone on the way back to our igloos. Is it Gary? Oh no! Look, Dodd! Agent! You've got to hurry to the ski village! Leg! Why? Huh? What's going on, Rookie? Is everything okay? It's Glutzy! He's hurt! What? He's... What? What happened? Without hesitation, I sprinted as fast as I could to the ski village. And when I finally got there... Wait, what happened? Oh! What happened? Okay, I was so afraid it's getting me dead! <laughs> Klutzy? What happened? Rookie and I were just taking a walk and we saw him struggling to move as he was bleeding out. So, so you don't even know how he started bleeding? No, but it looks like it's coming from that weird scratch of his. What happened? So his shell's cracking. Anyways, Rookie, did you get the first aid kit? Uh, about that. When I ran into Agent, I felt the need to tell him about Clutzy right away, and uh, I kind of forgot to get it. You forgot? Rookie, are you serious? I I'm sorry, I... Clutzy's in serious danger, and you just forgot to help him. I, I just thought Agent would want to see Clutzy. They would want to see him bandaged up and feeling better. You can't afford to make mistakes like this anymore, Rookie. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, JPG. Rookie ran off crying. Oh, maybe I was too harsh on him. Ah, uh, it's all right, JPG. You're just trying to look out for everyone. I understand. More importantly, where's the first aid kit at? I'll go get it. G should have one in his igloo. You can take Klutzy with you if you want, since you're the closest to him and all. JPG wrapped Klutzy in the blanket he was sitting on and gave it to me. Uh, thanks. Let's get going, Dot. Oh, where'd Dot go? Wasn't she behind me? I didn't see her come here. Weird. I wonder where she went. In any case, I better go get that first aid kit. Meanwhile, you should get some rest, JPG. If that's an order, take care, Agent. I carried Klutzy over to Gary's igloo. What is happening? Or maybe, like, it's a poison thing? Because we're on case four, so I don't know. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, hello, Agent. Did you need something? Look out, Zooks! Yeah, we've got a bit of a problem here. GPG said you had a first aid kit in here? Uh, yes, yes, come in quickly. I followed Gene to his igloo. Help your grandson. Woo! Who's this old penguin dude? <laughs> Another coat and socks and things. 
<laughs> Cheese 3000? Oh, I don't get it anymore. This is crazy. <laughs> All right, let's see here. First day for penguins, first day for puffles, first day for fish. Aha! First day for crabs. You have first day for fish? Y you know we eat them, right? Uh, yes, and that's why I feel bad for them sometimes. Anyways, bring Klutzy here. Yay! He's all better. That should stop the bleeding. With enough rest, it should hopefully heal the crack on his shell too. You hear that, buddy? You're gonna be okay. We just need to get some rest. Looks like he's already started to doze off. That's a good sign. Buddy, now that he's safe, what happened to him? I don't know. Raccoon JPG just found him like this. Whatever is causing that weird scratch in him must have cut deep enough that it finally started bleeding out. He's cracking open like an egg just in time for Easter. Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Just what does Mother Bird have against him? I got no idea. He didn't do anything wrong. Oh, by the way, G, there was something I wanted to ask you about. Oh, alright. What is it? Actually, I think Dot should be here to ask you too. She was with me after all. So I'll just ask you tomorrow. Besides, I've got to make sure this little guy gets some rest. If you insist. I'll see you in Dot tomorrow then, Agent. Shout out to these agent holding closely spreads being named Hold Baby! <laughs> oh, hold, my son. Oh, and if you're looking for a cozy place to take a nap with Klutzy, I recommend the Ski Lodge. Yeah, I think I'll go there. Thanks again for fixing him up, G. Of course. I mean it when I say I'll be looking out for all of you. You're a good dad, G. You're a really good dad. Oh, I gave Gary a hug and left his igloo. Mm. I want to draw that. <laughs> hey, is Klutzy okay? There you are. Where'd you go? Sorry, I wasn't quite ready to face the Ever Agents just yet, so I ran back to my igloo. Uh, I see. Anyway, Klutzy's fine. She gave him a bandage and now he's fast asleep. I was going to go to the ski lodge to lay down with him. Do you mind if I come with you? Huh? Uh, no, not at all. Happy April 1st, hope you like what I did with the server. No, Jen, I despised it. <laughs> That's been annoying me all day. So for context, um, Jen's server, um, she set it so the little um, message notification, like announcement notification's been on it all day. And I kept falling for it. It's ridiculous. Just looked up at shell cracks. Do indeed heal. It just takes two years and eight months. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're my dad. You are my dad. You're my dad. Boogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> You're not my dad. Ugly, bad, noodle head. <laughs> Ugly little penguin head. <laughs> uh, thanks. Let's go then. Dad and I went to the ski lodge with Klutzy. Where we made him into stew. No, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Buddies. Oh, he's sleeping. So, you've really gotten close to him, haven't you? Yeah, I was really worried about him. I don't know what Monobird's doing to him at night, but poor Klutzy can't talk or do much of anything to defend himself. I'll do everything I can to keep him safe. That's really admirable, Ace. Hard to believe we considered him an enemy before all this, huh? <laughs> yeah, but he really means no harm. I mean, just look at the little guy. Sleepy. That's good rendering. Ooh, I like that. He looks so peaceful. He must really feel close to you, too. I think... We kind of see ourselves in each other, honestly. What do you mean? Klutzy definitely knows a lot about this killing game. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if he knew everything. But he can't tell me, or anyone. Meanwhile, I don't know who I am. I have no way to explain to anyone what my true identity is. We both have things that we desperately want to tell everyone. But for our own separate reasons, we can. Oh. Agent. Ace, I don't know what to say. It's alright. Having Klutzy with me helps me feel less bad about it. I'm glad you two have each other. I'm sure he feels the same way about you. I hope so. Thanks for coming here with me, Dot. It was nice to talk to someone about this. Of course. Anytime, Ace. I'm probably gonna try and get some sleep. Keyword being, try. 
Do you want me to sing you a lullaby? Maybe that'll help you fall asleep? Huh? Are you joking? No, I'm serious! Paige used to sing a lullaby to the Elite Puffles after a long day of training. It went a little something like this. When you are down, I'll be there to help you find your way. No need to frown. The sky is the limit and tomorrow is a new day. Aww! It's the tune, I like it. Cover for this when? Today! <laughs> This special world allows all our wildest dreams to come true. Ooh, don't give up yet. There's much for us to see and do. This special world allows all the wildest dreams to come true. Sorry. <laughs> don't give up yet. Because I'll be there to waddle on with you. Oh! Oh, I love that. Oh, I want to cover that. Oh no, is this another thing? Nightmare. Oh, it's a director! Well done, Agent. Thanks to your remarkable skill and courage. Club Penguin is free. Truly. You have doomed us all. No! Not again! Oh... Oh, what?! Now you know the truth. And you are worthy of my secret. Keep it well. There is much to be done. And though the road ahead is long... Oh my god! The EPF shall fall again. What? Doesn't this make you angry? Doesn't this upset you? Please, you're our last hope. You must fight back for us. Uh, I, I. <laughs> Yeah! Listen to me, you you stupid bear! The EPF will never fall! We won't lose anyone else! We won't play your twisted games anymore! Mark my words! We will defeat you! The EPF shall rise again! <laughs> if that's what you want to believe, despair is all that awaits you! What are you talking about? I'll see you real soon! Huh? <gasps> uh, also, thank you, Tofu! That was really nice of you to say! <laughs> I don't know, I was just kind of following the tune of it. Oh, I'm so... That reminded me a bit of, um, Full Metal Alchemist. You know, when, um, Edward finds Al's body for the first time, and then he's being dragged back out? I love that. Oh, another nightmare. Oh, is someone dead? How long was I asleep? Is it morning already? It must be. Klutzy's gone. He's already been teleported back to Monobert. Oh, hi, Dot. So she's alive. Dot's still asleep. I'll be careful not to wake her up. W why is chat being weird? <laughs> whoa, 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 wait. Oh, sorry, I missed a text box. Sorry, chat was like being... Ooh, here we go. It's going to be sad. Why is it going to be sad? I quietly went over to the cuckoo clock to check the time. It's already past 10 a.m. <laughs> Sorry, don't looks cute. Man, I really did sleep for a while. If it's past 10, then Klutzy should have already been teleported outside for the day. Everyone else is probably awake too. I should go find them. I carefully opened the door and went outside to the ski village where I... Where... I... Where I... Where I... I... Where... Where I... Where I... Where I... Where I... Where I... It better not be. <sighs> oh, what?! No! What happened?! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
god! It's like I've been thrown there! What?! <laughs> oh my god! You know... I wasn't gonna say it. I had a really bad feeling that's what was gonna happen, that like... He was gonna be so injured that he died or something. Oh, that's so sad! Oh, it's like I was hoping it wasn't. I, I felt there was so. I felt there were too many, like, false. Um, you know, switch outs for it to not be him. Like, I thought it was gonna be, like, uh, I thought it was gonna be Gary or Jetpack Guy, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> really upset now. It's really messed up. <laughs> Hang on, I need some more. I'm just crying. <laughs> oh, I'm just crying a whole bit. <laughs> well, that's the case now. Who did it? I have my eyes watering. <laughs> Connected. Let me just check. I plugged it back in. Yep, yeah, we're good. Oh, that is messed up. So good. Yeah. Right. Ugh. Tofu. You, you can't just like do this. Like it's not fair. Okay. I'm gonna bet they were killed by the umbrella. <laughs> I'm gonna bet right here right now where they were because they were outside the sports shop i think monoberts had something to do with this because it looks as if they've just been thrown outside click click oh yeah click and check guys <laughs> oh that sucks like here's the thing with frankie that surprised me because I didn't expect it. But with that, that just made me sad. Because I did expect it. I just didn't want it to happen. That was my son. That was a baby boy. Mum just emailed me telling me to shut up. <laughs> no, mother, you don't understand. <laughs> We've just lost our best friend. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's go. Oh, look at him. Oh, that silence. Yeah, I think it might be mine a bit. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> it's gonna just go off the talks. <laughs> It's a very real reaction. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't actually scream right now, otherwise mom's gonna kill me. <laughs> I will go back and voice act this and give this the justice it deserves because, oh, I can feel that. <laughs> Oh, that sucks! <gasps> same agent, same. Ace, is everything okay? What's going on? <gasps> I can't scream, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, calm down, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. I can't, I can't do this. Why? <laughs> Who did this? Come on, see! I can't be here. I have to get out of here. <laughs> hey, Ace, wait! Agent ran away. Ace! I stared at Klutzy's lifeless body in disbelief. Did this really happen? Soon enough, everyone else came running into the ski village. I like this perspective switch. 
We heard a scream from over here. Is everything all ra- <gasps> What the? Is he really- Lutzi! No! How could this have happened? Damn it! Not again! Uh... Dot, what's going on? Uh, I... I froze. I'm not ready to face the agents again, especially without agent. But I don't have a choice. Please, tell us what happened, Dot. We're not gonna jump to any conclusions. Just uh, tell us what you know, okay? I took a deep breath. Sam and Amy really are supportive. Look, I barely know any more than you guys do. I just woke up to agents screaming outside. I tried to calm them down, but they ran away. So, Klutzy's really dead? She went over to examine Klutzy's body. He's gone. His pulse has stopped and his body's cold. This can't be happening! I know this is awful, everyone, but calm down and think for a second. Something's not right. You notice too, huh? Something that's not right? I think I know what they're talking about. Monobert hasn't shown up yet. Hey, yeah, you're right! He's always quick to show up and give us a stupid file wherever this happens. More than that, the body discovery announcement is supposed to go off when two or more people discover a body. There's six of us here. Seven, including Agent. So even if one of us is the killer, the announcement still should have gone off. Does that mean... Klutzy's still alive? I don't think so, Super Rooks. Gary was right, his pulse was totally stopped. So if Klutzy's dead, where the heck is Monobird? Why isn't he getting us the file? Maybe he did this to Klutzy. He did always seem to hate him after all, plus we weren't given a motive. Doubtful. Monobird was adamant he wouldn't kill a participant himself without a reason to. And perhaps his goal all along was to get Klutzy killed. Maybe now that that's happened, the killing game is over. Even when the robots killed him. That could be a possibility. Where you check over a pulse of a crab. I was gonna say. So can we cook him now or? Oh, I'm sorry. This is really messed me up. Oh, that was such a sneaky little bonding as well. I really wanted to act that part out. I'm so sorry, guys. That's not likely either. If he really wanted someone else to kill Klutzy, he wouldn't have kept him secure in his private quarters. Quarters high half the time. Hey, howdy there. I'm Dodd. <laughs> well, he still hasn't showed up yet. Don't you think it's possible that's because the killing game is over? If Klutzy dying is what ended the killing game, then was he the one behind all this? I can't possibly believe that. But admittedly, it does make a little bit of sense. Until Monobut shows up and tells us otherwise, that's what we have to assume. Let's check the force fields. Our priority now is finding a way off of this island. No, it's not. Huh? What do you mean, Dot? It doesn't matter if Klutzy was the mastermind. It doesn't matter if the killing game is over. We're not going anywhere until we figure out exactly what happened here. Eight of our friends were killed here. For their sake, I refuse to leave this island until we understand every single reason as to why this game started. I agree with Dot. Besides, there's no way Klutzy could have started this. There must be something else going on. Yeah! Just because Monobird isn't forcing us to investigate that doesn't mean we still shouldn't do it. We have to get to the bottom of this. You're right. I wish I could have prevented Klutzy's death, but feeling guilty about it won't get us anywhere. The best we can do for him now is uncover the truth. Klutzy was really cute. Cute things can't be evil. That's a law, I think. <laughs> JPG? Look, I agree. We definitely need to know everything, but... Are you really going to work with us, Dot? You've refused to do so for the past week. Where'd this sudden leadership come from? That's a fair concern. I know I haven't been acting fairly towards you guys, but I'm done with that whole charade. I'm ready to believe in you guys again. I do believe in you guys again. I hope you can do the same for me. Cute things can be. What do you say, JPG? Or JPEG? <laughs> hey! Friends! Alright, disguise gal. I'm with you all the way. That's what I like to hear. I miss picking on you, man. As did I. But let's save it for a better time, huh? I like the reflection in his glasses. Agreed. We've got a lot to do. J of Peg. <laughs> it's no secret. Agents are best at solving cases, but they were so close to Klutzy. 
I don't think they'll be able to help us this time. They need some space. So we're going to have to work extra hard to get to the bottom of Klutzy's death, as well as figuring out the truth for this entire game. This case is different than any of the ones we've faced so far. I can just tell that there's something bigger going on here. You guys feel it too, right? This is it. The beginning of the end. Except it's not because this is chapter 5. <laughs> Let's begin. Oh, Jesus. This is gonna mess up my voice. Investigation. Woo! We should probably investigate his body further. Oh, buddy. You're right, G. Klutzy's body is really cold. Indeed. I'm certain he's gone. I also notice his body is slightly wet as well. Hey, wait. There's no blood, right? So what was the cause of death? That'd probably be a lot easier to figure out if we had a butter bird file. That clown only gave us the cause of death once. I doubt he'd give it to us this time either. I think he's frozen to death. If he's slightly wet... Because he can't drown because he's a crab. I think he's frozen himself. They do have the machine in the gadget room. He could have froze himself through that and killed himself like that. He could have killed himself. Because Klotzi wanted to finish this. Oh, God. Did Klotzi pull a Sakura? Oh. Oh, this is messed up. The question still remains. How did Klotzi die? He was bleeding yesterday. So let's take a look underneath that bandage. I peeled the bandage off of Klotzi's body. Huh? That scratch he had was completely healed. That's the work of the treatment I gave him yesterday. It's a very advanced kind of first aid for crabs. With enough rest, it can heal a crack on a crab shell in no time. I see. So if the scratch was healed overnight, then it shouldn't have anything to do with the cause of death. Makes sense to me. Anything else here looks suspicious? Hmm, well, like the murderer, but doesn't the doorstep of the sport shop seem like an inconvenient spot to kill someone? I mean, the killer didn't even try to hide poor Klutzy's body. I think Klutzy's body would still be here whether they tried to hide it or not, Rookie. Yeah, Monobird said this exact spot is where Klutzy's teleported to every morning. So they could have been dead before. I think I know what's happened. I think they used the machine. Oh, I'm scared. That means Klutzy was killed before nighttime. Then he was teleported to Monobert while dead, and finally his body was teleported back outside here. It might be unlikely, but he still could have been killed during nighttime, if Monobert was the one who killed him. He was also still a traitor, right? Isn't it possible that they have access to Monobert's private quarters at nighttime, though? It's possible, yes, but we still don't know enough about the traitor yet. It's just as possible that the traitor doesn't have access to that place. Sam's right. We shouldn't make assumptions about who has access to a place that we don't even know. Well, I still think we should keep it in mind. This case is crazy enough already, so anything could be possible. You're right, Rux. We'll definitely still keep it in mind. Bye, Sunny. Thanks for joining. Why is the crab purple? I think... Well, he's dead. I think he fr if he's like... It's like a blue purple, he probably froze to death. It could be frostbite. Do you guys notice anything here? Or do you think it's safe to move on? Hmm. There's one more thing I want to check. I gently pried open Klotzi's claws and found him holding onto something. Huh? What is this? It looks like a scrap of the beach ball that Klotzi and Agent like to play with together. Hey, didn't Cadence and Frankie use that ball for the trap they tried to set up? Yep, but looks like no one took it down. The rest of the ball is popped on the ground over there. Oh man, was this ball involved in another murder? I certainly hope not. That ball meant a lot to Agent and Klotzi. Yeah, sure sounds like it. Anyways, I think that's finally all there is the yeah, I think that's I think that's that's finally all there is to look at over here. I suggest we split might wanna come back and let me finish that mo fucking sentence. Sorry, I didn't mean to um curse there. I just I got a little bit too seven. This is Dot's voice now. <laughs> I'm joking. I suggest we split up and search elsewhere. Alright. Okay. Where to next, Dot? Oh, well. <laughs> Jeez, you decided to go with her rather quickly. Can I tag along? No way, Sam. This is a group of gals. This is a group of lesbians. Um, gals! You're the only two girls here, though. And there's six of us right now, so two groups of three will be more effective. 
There's no talking sense into Amy sometimes. I'll just go with you, Mr. Prince. Hey, Dot, do you mind if I go with you and Gabba Girl? Not at all, Rooks. Awesome! We've got a group of three. Hey, what gives? How come you're letting a boy into your group now? Well, unlike you, Super Ritz is a real superhero, you know? Can't pass up a chance to work with someone like that. Whoa! Amy! Jesus! <laughs> I think Amy's just trying to lighten the mood. Uh, come on, Sam, let's continue our investigation. Gary, Sam, and JPG went off to investigate further. Yeah, lighten the mood whilst Clutzy's dead body's just right there. Alrighty then, where do you think we should look, Dot? I want to find Agent. Not only do I want to make sure they're okay, but I think they may also have a clue to Klutzy's death. Really? What makes you say that? I was with both Agent and Klutzy last night in the ski lodge. We went to sleep pretty early, so it's possible something happened to Klutzy while we were asleep. Uh, uh, okay, then maybe Agent remembers something that happened last night. Let's head to their igloo. We started walking towards Agent's igloo. Oh, heard the dog. So, Rookie, why do you want to search with us? You never pass up a chance to work with JPG. Well, I kind of upset him yesterday. I was supposed to get the first aid kit from Gary to help Klutzy, but I sort of messed up and forgot. I see. JPG's been acting really serious lately, hasn't he? I understand the feeling. Do you think it's just a front? I mean, that's what you said it was like for you, right, Doc? No, I know JPG. He's always serious. Sometimes a little too much for his own good. Combine that with a deadly serious situation, well, I think you get the picture. I know I screw up a lot, but I'm worried I went too far this time. I want to apologize to him, but I don't think now's a good time. I hope he can forgive me. I know he will, Rex. And if he doesn't, I'll talk to him, alright? Just give him some time to cool off. You're right. Thanks, Dot. Now let's keep investigating. For Klutzy! Let the gays be good with each other. <laughs> First and bang one. God. The three of us made our way to the agent's igloo. Their door is open slightly. I don't think they even bothered to close it. Oh no, it's gonna be sad. Oh no! What does that say on the wall up there on the TV screen? It says G. It says FF. It says Z. It says F. G. <laughs> hey, that's that key symbol again on the box. That's a bit sus. Oh, this is messed up. Ace? It's all in the Clutzy costume. Why? <laughs> Ace, I know this is hard for you, but please, we really need your help. Clutzy. 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 <laughs> it was no use. They just kept crying. I don't think they even noticed me come in. Oh, it's the bed! Oh, this is messed up. Clutzy and I better not actually be dead. Like, please let this be some kind of fake up because this is really messed up. Poor Hachin. They love Clutzy more than Daddy would hear. It's gonna be a while before they're able to tell us anything. I guess we'll just have to wait. Hachin doesn't deserve this. It was such a big help to me before. I feel like they've helped all of us in one way or another. We probably wouldn't have made it through the past free trials without their help. They're the best agent in both the PSA and EPF, no question. I just don't understand how... Never mind. What is it, Dot? I'll save it for when they're ready to tell you. Anyways, why don't we head back to... Uh, oh. Okay. I bet you Gary couldn't get through to them. W what the... Ah, you're all here. Please excuse my blatantness. Okay. Ah, you better have a damn good explanation for this. What? What just happened? We were just at the Eclo Village, and then there was a bunch of blue, and now we're oh! Looks like you have the post teleportation jitters, Gabble Gal. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. Jeez, is that what Clutzy went through every day and night? Will you all shut up and focus on what just happened. 
Monobot finally showed up and teleported us to the snowforts for a trial. How do you do that, by the way? I thought you said your teleporter didn't work on us. Ugh, don't sweat the details, Brainiac. I can teleport you all around the island as much as I want, I just can't get you off it. That doesn't make sense. I said don't sweat the details! <laughs> Besides, you've got more pressing matters to, matters to worry about. Like the fact my teeth are so big I can barely speak now. Bye, Shadow White. Klutzy the live April Fools. Klutzy is dead, so now it's time for the trial. Yeah, not yet. You better explain to us what took you so long to show up. Sheesh, I was getting to that. The reason I was late was because I had to prepare something for you guys in order to have a fair trial for Klutzy's murder. A monobird file would be nice, though considering your last few would probably be worthless, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm not giving you guys a monobird file. Tradition, schmadition, I'm over it. Besides, I've done enough work already. What work? You didn't even give us a motive and so Oh, you didn't even give us a motive and someone still ended up dying. Who says I didn't give you guys a motive? Uh, literally all of us? You didn't give us one. Oh yes, I did. I chose one of you and gave you access to my private quarters without telling anyone else. You know who you are. What the heck? How? In other words, whoever got access was able to kill Klutzy during nighttime. Correct, Amondo. I thought they just used the information in there to learn some secrets about this killing game. But they ended up killing Klutzy instead. What a shame. Oh, and one more thing. I should mention about my private quarters. It's the PSA HQ in the gadget room. It's... What? You mean you've turned our base into your own? It's quite cozy. The I see you in especially handy for keeping tabs on you. <laughs> Sorry, I, c I need to breathe for a second. Not like I really need it, though. Exactly. Like, anyways, Klutzy was killed in the gadget room. And apparently, in order to have a fair trial, I need to let you guys investigate in there. Y you mean you're finally gonna let us in the HQ? Of course not! There's top secret information in there! The reason I took so long was because I had to prepare a replicate gadget room in a spare pocket dimension. That's where the box portal leads. But if you can teleport us around the island... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> can you have just teleported us into the gadget room? Did you really need to make a whole separate copy of the room? True. Huh. Don't stick your beak where it doesn't belong, Blondie. There's too much valuable information in both the PSA HQ and the gadget room. This was the best option. I don't buy it, but whatever. Let's just go. I'm glad you we understand each other. Anyways, can one of you uh, push the blue one in or something? They haven't moved since I teleported them here. And I don't think they're going to. Ah, Agent. I grabbed Agent's flipper and guided them into the box portal. Jesus. Yay! Ah, I know it technically isn't the real thing, but it's nice to be back. I've missed this place. So this is one of your guys' super secret rooms, right? How exciting! It's kind of messy, though. Look, I'm not... No, I am an inventor. <laughs> I'm an inventor. We don't exactly get along with tidy rooms. But you're right. The gadget room definitely appears to be messier than usual. Oh, do you halfwits listen to anything I say? This was the scene of the crime. Now hurry up and investigate this place before I change my mind. Okay. Get gadget room. Go, go, gadget room. Well, I shouldn't hang in a clown more than I already have. I'd better start looking around. Hey, look over there. There's popcorn over the floor. That must be really old popcorn. Rookie, don't eat the crime scene. Mm, I would never. Yum. Wait, seriously though, why is there popcorn on the floor? It appears to be coming from the thingamabob 3000. You really aren't good at naming things, are you? Says you, Mr. Headline. Hey, quit arguing. Can you just explain what the heck a thingamajig 3000 is? That's the thingy my mom The thingy my 3000 is something completely different. I'm gonna go insane if no one tells me what these thingy my doodads do. From what I remember, they're just overly complicated chain reaction machines, and they usually don't work. Hey, I finally got this one to work. Then why does it say error? <laughs> Wait, why does it say error? Probably because it still doesn't work. No, no, it does! I've just always had a program to display an error message after it's used because, well, it usually doesn't work. So you're saying that because this error message is here, that means the thingamabob was used recently? That's correct. 
Oh, curses, why are my gadgets always used in these murders? Hey, it's not your fault, G. After all, you made pretty much everything on the island. Thank you, Rocky. You're too sweet. Hey, that's a real cute moment, you guys, but I'd still like to know what their thingy Macaulay does exactly. Right, right, my apologies, Amy. Basically, the end result of the thingamabob for the thousand signs a bright light onto some corn stalks and pops the corn into, well, the popcorn. That explains why there's popcorn over the floor, then. Hold on, you're telling me you can make popcorn just by shining a light onto some corn? There's no way that's possible. Actually, it might be. Gary, weren't you still eating some kind of super growth formula for corn not long ago? Ah, that's right, Dot. Yes, yes, it's coming back to me now. Oh. Not long before the killing game started, the PSA was at a risk of being exposed to the public by Herbert. Okay. After he'd escaped capture, Herbert had accidentally left behind a packet of Zime seeds, more commonly known as corn seeds. Ooh! I studied the seeds he had left behind and discovered that he had been using some kind of super group formula on them in order to make them grow as quickly as possible. However, this formula also had some strange side effects on the corn once it had grown. For starters, it could be popped into the popcorn machine. Le, 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 le. Gary, I understand, but can you, like, slow down a second? For starters, it could be popped into the popcorn much quicker. Ooh, this is getting weird. It also appears to have somewhat of a mind of its own. If you were to toss a piece into the air, it would always try to land on something, like a button or a lever, some kind of whatever. And despite its small size, it would appear that the weight of the corn is also multiplied tremendously. So much so, in fact, that according to my calculations, if you popped it over the super corn in one place, it could potentially be strong enough to destroy an entire building! I did it. In short, the thing about Bob is basically just something I made in my off time while studying the super growth formula. Ah, oh, finally! A clear explanation! Thank you, Gary! So essentially, the corn is magic, right? The corn is magic. It's not magic, it's science! Well, I believe it. That piece of popcorn that I ate was pretty heavy now I think about it. In fact, I feel full just after eating just one piece of it. Ricky, don't eat the magic and scientific crime scene. Oh, right, all right. I'm sick of talking about popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> Let's look at something else. Yeah, zooks! The popcorn on the floor leads right over to the test chamber. Ugh. Hey, why is there a life preserver on the floor? Is it trying to learn how to swim? Hold on. Why is the test chamber doohickey? Oh, what's this test chamber do, Hickey? Why are there so many weird gadgets? Amy, it's called the gadget room, you know. The test chamber is pretty much what it sounds like. You put an object into the chamber and then press one of the buttons to see how it reacts to certain things. In this case, fire, water, or ice. Right again, Dot, and it looks like whoever was in here was testing out how a recycling bin would react? Let's take a closer look at that. JPG pulled the lever in the test chamber. The doors was open, but the conveyor belt didn't move. Hey, what gives? Isn't the conveyor belt supposed to move after you pull the lever? Follow-up question, was the compartment thingy supposed to be open? What the? Uh, uh, no, it's not! So it must have opened up the compartment and cut the wires to the conveyor belt! Well, at least we can still open the doors. JPG, pull the lever again, please. Yes, ma'am. Once the doors open, I reached inside and grabbed the recycling bin. Huh? What is it, Doc? The recycling bin is full of water. Oh, I was right. <gasps> Ding dong, bing bong. Yeah, my ears. Why do you have to shout that so loud? There wouldn't be much of a point in using the loudspeaker since we're all in the same room. Wait, wait, that reminds me. You never got to finish explaining it last time, G. Where are our ears again? Ah, right, excellent question, Rookie. As Penguin's ears are covered up by our... No, 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 we're not doing the ear thing again, just go into the portal! <laughs> I'm having too much fun. Everyone listened to Monobird and went into the portal. I had to get Agent inside since they weren't moving. I also have to take a sip of water because, oh, it's a trial now. Oh, God. Guys, I'm actually really scared for this. Mm. Ah. I don't know what's going to happen. Because somebody's a traitor. And agents, uh, I guess we're playing this dot now. <sighs> no, I'm not saying he's drowned. I'm saying he was frozen. Because um, if he's wet, 
he probably got stuffed into the recycling bin and got frozen like that. Or he put himself in there. You gonna be shook? I am. Oh, <laughs> terrified. Ah, thank you for the cooperation. Now then, let's begin the trial for the murder of Klutzy, the ultimate henchman. Although he wasn't really good at being a henchman. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I I'm hydrate or dehydrate, guys. I'm gonna take another sip just in case. Mm. Hydrate or dehydrate, like Klutzy. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. <coughs> Hydrate like Frankie. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Let's go. Anyways, it's been a while. So why don't I go over the rules again? It's been like two days. It's literally been like three days. Shut up! Just figure out who the killer is or else you'll all die, all right? Sheesh! I hope people liked exposition. <laughs> Why don't we start with the obvious? What was Klutzy's cause of death? Klutzy wasn't bleeding, so what could have killed him? Hey, this is just like the last game. Oh, that's Frankie. Oh, Rory even. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's little cogs and nuts and bolts. That's cute. Hey, this is just like the last time, remember? Frankie didn't bleed either, so maybe Klutzy died by drowning too. That's not possible, Rookie. Penguins may be a different story, but the typical club penguin crab is able to bleed, breathe underwater just fine. Maybe Klutz is a penguin. In secret. Oh, I guess you're right. I've had my line set by tons of crabs when I go ice fishing. Well, if it wasn't drowning, what else could have killed him that wouldn't have made him bleed? I still think he could have bled. After all, couldn't the killer just clean the blood off of his shell? I'm not sure about that, JPG. Klutz didn't look like he had any scars on him. Plus, the treatment I gave him yesterday healed his scratch completely, so the blood couldn't have come from there either. That's a rookie tier theory. <laughs> Shush. Shoot, you're right. What did kill him then? The answer is obvious. Monobird's trying to trick us. Klutzy's not really dead. I mean, sure, he said he had to prepare a replica gadget room before he could meet us. But what if that was just a crafty cover-up? Are you serious? I'd never lie to you guys. I don't doubt that Monobird lied it was about summing rooks, but... Sadly, we checked Klutzy's butter herself numerous times. He's dead. But it still doesn't really make sense, does it? How could Klutzy have possibly died? Let's think about this from a different angle. We already know the scene of the crime, so what could have been used in there for murder? The scene of the crime? Monobot himself said they had to tell us it was the gadget room in order to have a fair trial. Right, now he could be lying about that, but for now, let's just assume he's telling the truth. Oh, bye, Dylan. Present the news. Tell them that gay penguins had a fight and they should get back together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Monobird seemed really annoyed when he had to let us in there to investigate. If he was lying, he'd probably be a lot more smug about it. Smug her? You mean like this? <laughs> That's a good start, Gamagal. But Monobird is more of a tilty grin, doesn't he? Can't forget those angry eyebrows either. Like this. How about I give you a demonstration, free of charge? Oh, I see, I see. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. This is a trial. We've got to solve this case. Rats. I was hoping I could keep you idiots distracted. Jeez, it's a wonder you've even managed to solve a case before this. Well, Agent typically did most of the critical thinking before, but they haven't said a word yet. Oh, God. Wait. Clutzy's there. What's Klutzy sing? I like this music. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, it's the trap. That's how they met. He put the candle there and trapped him in the net. Or they put the candle there. <sighs> Tofu. Listen, mate. <laughs> oh, trauma. Asian was really close to Klutzy. We're gonna have to do this trial without their help. Yeah, I mean someone just died for crying out loud. There's no time for comic relief. To be fair, that's why it's called comic relief. But you're right, we need to focus on the case. What were we talking about again? Oh right, the crime scene. Yes, yes, the gadget room. Oh, why did it have to be the gadget room? So we need to figure out what was in the gadget room could have been used to kill Klutzy. It was the weird heavy super cop popcorn on the floor. Maybe that's the murder weapon. 
What? Did the killer just repeatedly pelt Klutzy with heavy popcorn? That'd be a bit overkill. I don't think that's it. If that popcorn's as strong as G said it was, several blows probably would have caused Klutzy the bleed. Oh, this music. That popcorn may be strong, but I don't believe it's deadly. It's gotta be involved somehow, though. There's no way that popcorn will be all over the place if it wasn't. The popcorn came from the Thingamatron, right? God, I... I came over like a Danganronpa theme thing in my head. Um, you know, of like something similar to this, like a uh, full revolution of light, which is the story I'm working on. So I did have a thing. I did picture a thing like in case three Queen Goose or something like this. Like she's the main character, but then she recedes into herself. So it's like her dad or something has to take charge of it or driving has to take charge. So I love this. I really like this angle. Thingamabob, and yes, all you have to do is pull a lever, then a mechanical arm deflates a balloon that's stuck inside a tube, which causes a bouncy ball to... Blah, 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 blah. The short version G, if you please. Ugh, it basically just shines a light onto some super corn and pops it into popcorn. So someone, probably the killer, set off the thingamabob and got popcorn over the floor, right? I suppose that's it. But what would be the point of that? That's just a waste of perfectly good popcorn. I may have an idea. Gary, you said that the supercorn practically has a mind of its own, right? Well, not literally, of course, but yes, based on my experiments, it would appear that the supercorn has a tendency to land on a target when it's in the air. Did it fall on the lever? Beckler set the thing off. Exactly. So it's possible the killer had the super popcorn land on a target of sorts to aid them in killing Klutzy. A target? Well, what could have been used as a target? Well, there was the life preserver on the floor. That kind of looks like a target. There's a glaring hole in that theory, JPG. Literally, life preservers have a giant hole in the middle. So the popcorn likely would have just landed in the center of the target and not really hit anything. Yes, but that's likely what the killer had in mind. After all, I don't think the life preserver itself was the target. It was simply used to aid the popcorn into hitting the real target. Yes, yes! Oh, we're onto it, guys. Real target? Think about it. What's the closest invention to the Thingamabob 3000? That would be the test chamber. That's right. I believe our killer used the popcorn to push with the buttons on the test chamber. Since the supercorn had increased weight, it should definitely have been force to press a button down. But how in the world would the light preserver help them push a button? Well... If the popcorn shot the buttons on the test chamber, it probably would have tried to land on all three of them. Ah, I see. So they used the life preserver as a countermeasure. That way, the popcorn would lock onto it as a bigger target compared to the smaller buttons. Yeah. The life preserver had a hole in the middle too. So once the popcorn landed on it, it will funnel into the center and land exactly on the button the killer wanted to press. After getting pelted with enough of the super strong popcorn, the life preserver probably fell off the test chamber. That explains why it was on the floor. So the killer used the popcorn from the thingy machine to press a button on the test chamber, and that was used to kill Klutzy? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it makes sense, but the physics themselves don't. But I suppose that in itself makes sense in a place like Club Penguin. <laughs> Fourth wall break! <laughs> now then, we just need to figure out which button on the test chamber was used to kill Klutzy. Oh goodness, I hope it wasn't fire. Poor Klutzy doesn't deserve to be burned alive. Rookie, his body was still intact. Whoops, then it must have been water. The recycling bin was full of it after all. Poor Klutzy's body was wet. No, Super Rux, we already determined that Klutzy couldn't have drowned. Double whoops, today really not my day. It wasn't the fire button, and it wasn't the water button, so it must have been the... Do you know what the last button was, Amy? Of course I don't! I can't even remember what the heck the thingamagadget's called! My pause was your cue to reveal it! <laughs> I don't know why she's got really anime a woo all of a sudden, but I actually love it. She's so cute. <laughs> oh, I see. Does she think everything is a play? Anyways, the button that was pressed was snow. <laughs> uh huh! The murder weapon was snow! I knew it all along! You're three cases lately on that prediction. 
Oh, you're three cases late on that prediction. But uh, better late than never, I suppose. Now hold on, I can buy the magic popcorn thing, but you're telling me that the murder weapon used to kill crap that inhabits a snowy island was snow? I yeah, I don't think so. Well, pressing the snow button doesn't actually create snow. That's simply just a symbol on the button. Instead, it freezes whatever's in the test chamber. We did it. I called it! I got it right! I'm a, I'm a genius, guys. Because <laughs> I was thinking he had to have died in there one way or another, so that was the only thing that could have killed him. Right. In other words, the murder weapon was ice. Klutzy was frozen to death. You'll be my prediction was wrong? Oh, I'm gonna write a very angry review now. A, a review of what, Rookie? A review of life, JPG! A review of life. Rookie is symbolism of society. <laughs> Back to the ice thing. Is it really possible for Klutzy to freeze it up? I mean, the island's always cold. We're used to cold temperatures. Speak for yourself! <laughs> That's a good point, Sam. However, I argue that there's a difference between living in a cold climate and being trapped in a solid. See if I broke something. I did not. Sorry, like I said, my microphone's been really bad recently. Uh, I have ordered a new wire. I'm just checking something super quick. What's this? Uh, yep, that's fine. Uh huh. Just checking a couple notifications super quick and seeing if I need to do anything. I do not. Let's go. <clears throat> play. No, no. Play. Open the thing. There we go. Solid block of ice? That recycling bin was full of water, remember? So if the snow button was pressed, then the water in the recycling bin would have been frozen to solid ice in no time. And if Klutzy was submerged in that water, he would have been frozen inside of it. Poor guy. Then over time, the ice would have melted into the water that we saw in the bin. Couldn't Klutzy have just gotten out of the bin? I assume the killer did this to him while he was asleep. Crabs usually sleep underwater anyway, so I don't think that being placed in water would have woken him up. Oh, no fair! Klutzy's adorable when he's sleeping. Who do that to him? That's where we need to figure out, that's what we need to, that's what we'll need to figure out next. But it seems this is the true cause of death. Klutzy was frozen. We all live in a Pokemon world. Hang on, I still have a problem with this. What's on your mind, JPG? Klutzy being frozen to death suddenly adds up with the evidence. I don't doubt that. However, what was the point of using the thingamabob to press the snow button? Couldn't the killer have just press the button themselves? That's true. There's no way the killer would use such an elaborate setup just to push a button that they could easily push themselves. Maybe they were on a time limit? It only takes a second to press a button. In fact, it would probably take more time to figure out how the thingamabob worked. Ooh! Maybe the buttons on the test chambers have flipper print scatters on them, so their identity would be revealed if they pressed the button themselves. That would be a decent idea for a security measure, Rocky. Unfortunately, penguins don't even have flipper prints. And I have no idea why the killer would use an automated setup to simply press a button. Was it Klutzy? I think Klutzy did it. It had to be. There has to be some explanation. Let's try discussing something else and see if we can come back to that later. Alright then. That's the cause of death mostly figured out. What's next? Maybe the time of death? That should be easy. It was during nighttime. Right. Klutzy's teleported to the gadget room every night at 10 p.m. Then, the one chosen from Monobird's motive was given access to the gadget room. Klutzy was killed. The killer left. And Klutzy's dead body was teleported outside the sports shop in the morning. Hmm. Is that the only possibility, though? Klutzy the Klutz klutzed himself. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you have a- oh wait, do you have another idea, Rux? Yeah, what if Klutzy was killed before nighttime, that his body was teleported into the gadget room at night, and then back outside in the morning? That would have meant any one of us could have done it, and we'd have to start this case over from scratch. 
Yes, sorry, Rooks, but I don't think that's it. The cause of death made too much sense. It had to be from the test chamber. Could be. Besides, Monobot himself confirmed that the crime scene was the gadget room. Klutzy's only teleported into the gadget room at night time, so there's no way he could be killed in there beforehand. Oh, man. Here I thought I was onto something again. Unless Klutzy was the one let in. I don't know. It's all right, Rooks. We need to examine every possible angle. The more we know we're wrong, the easier it will be to find the truth. And you're wrong all the time. <laughs> That's right. My inventions typically always fail the first 2,999 times before they finally start to work. You should be proud of being wrong, Rookie. <laughs> guys. Wow! That's some great advice, guys. I feel a lot better about myself already. I'm so happy that I'm wrong all the time. Just don't get out of your way to be wrong, okay? <sighs> Anyways, now that we have a solid idea of the cause and time of death, we need to figure out who could have done this. In other words, we gotta figure out who Monobert gave access to the gadget room last night. Hmm, this is going to be tricky. It could have been any one of us. How in the world are we going to narrow it down who could have done it? It had to be someone who knew about both the properties of the supercorn, as well as how the thingamabob and test chamber worked. Uh-oh. It couldn't have been Sam or Amy, then. They aren't PSA or EPF agents. You mean it has to be one of his agents? Well, this is some deja vu. That would appear to be the case. We know how those inventions work. I hate to do this, but this doesn't make sense to question the guy who, you know, actually built those inventions. Oh, I was gonna say. Ugh. Well, you mean. Yep, I'm talking about you, Gary. Uh oh. Hmm, I suppose that is a fair assumption. However, the killer was not me. You see, there's a little something called an eye scan 3000 in front of the door to the gadget room. It only lets me inside. Though it admittedly is imperfect. While an initial scan will fail if it doesn't detect me, a secondary scan will be successful if you're wearing a pair of my glasses. I have many spare pairs, so I assume this is how the culprit managed to get into the gadget room. So how does this prove my innocence? Well, all we need to do is check the security log of the iScan 3000. If the scan was a success in the first go, that means I'm the one that entered the gadget room last night and killed Klutzy. But if the scan took two tries, that means it was someone else. Yay, he's safe. So, Monobert, if you would please, let us go check the iScan security log. <laughs> I disabled that iScan of yours a long time ago. You don't need to use it to enter the gadget room anymore. But hey, thanks for wasting your time with that explanation. Whoops. You... You what? Are you serious? Don't worry, G. I think it still helps you to prove your innocence. Or still helps, even. Yeah, I mean, you seem pretty surprised about your thing in the eye scan being disabled. You probably wouldn't have noticed that last time if you went in there. Or you would have noticed it. Besides, I don't think Gary will bother explaining how all of his inventions work if they end up proving him guilty. That's true. And that's true, too. It's not a solid alibi, but it's still pretty likely that Gary isn't the culprit. Phew! My goodness, that's a relief. But I still feel as though I've wasted everyone's time. Hi, hey, take your own advice, G. Remember what you told me like three minutes ago about it being good to be wrong? Oh, I suppose I did say something like that. Thank you, Rookie. But where does this get us now? With the eye scan disabled, we have no way of knowing who could have possibly gone into the gadget room. Well, we still have four agents remaining. Um, I don't really want to say this, but aren't you guys worried about how suspiciously quiet one of his agents has been? Hey! Brooks, are you seriously suspecting agent? Uh, I don't want to, but like you said, if we don't look at every possibility, we'll never find the truth. I'm really hoping that I'm wrong like always, but agent is definitely suspicious. Agent was the last one who saw Klutzy. Well, technically it was Dot, but... You know. They're just kind of quiet, though. It's not like they're a glaring piece of evidence against them, or there is a killer piece. Still, it isn't a possibility we should simply overlook. We need to hear from Asian themselves. <laughs> to call Cyan sus. 
Oh, just let them be. This case is already hard enough for them. Agent did know about the Supercorn. It was involved in their last mission before all this. Oh, no. Oh, please don't suspect them. No, it's not Agent. I know Agent do didn't do this, but how can I... Wow, wow, wow! Seems like you've chumps to split right down the middle again, aren't you? <gasps> Scorn debate! Scorn debate! Split? You mean... That's right! It's time for another scrum debate! Hey, necktie! Are you gonna defend yourself or are you just gonna sit there? Oh, this is messed up. Well, but I guess they're just gonna sit there. Agents will sit out. Oh, agents will sit out of this one, folks. The rest of you climb into your boxes. I still think this is ridiculous. I thought it was kind of fun. Of course you did, rookie. Like last time, we all climbed into our boxes. Scrum debate featuring Monica. <laughs> ah, it's Dot. She squish. And then. All right, let's do this proper this time. <laughs> what health didn't hiccup? Let's go. Oh, it's Asian this time. Where'd they go? Kazak. Oh, Clotzi's there as well. Yeah, come on, Dot. Oh, what's Gary on that side? Come on. <clears throat> Is Agent suspicious? I don't want it to be true, but Agent has been suspiciously quiet this whole trial. They were really close to Clutzy. If Sam was the victim, uh, they'd probably be quiet too. The Agent I know always does everything in their power to solve the case. They've solved like every case before this. I think they deserve a break. Their last mission involved the Supercorn. It's possible they knew about the properties. You were investigating the Supercorn 2G. Any one of his agents could have known about it. But if it was an agent, then who else could have activated the Thingamabob? All you need to do to activate the Thingamabob is pull a lever, right? Klutzy could have done that. Yeah, there we go! But why in the world would Klutzy activate it himself? It's possible that this whole plan was Klutzy's doing all along. <gasps> they sussed it! Oh, God. This is our answer. Oh, no. This is going to be bad. Yay, I like this music. The whole plan was Klutzy's all along? Unfortunately, I believe that's the case. No way. Impossible. Think about it. The only thing we couldn't explain about Klutzy's death is why the killer used the supercorn to press the button rather than pressing it themselves. However, if Klutzy was planning to use the test chamber on himself, he'd have no way of pressing the snow button from inside the machine. That's why he used the popcorn from the thingamabob to do the part for him. You mean he... He really did all of this to himself? Indeed. I believe the motive Monobert told us about was just a lie to lead us away from the truth. But this had to be the correct answer. The only one who could have possibly killed Klutzy was... Your facts do not seem to combine! <gasps> yes! Uh, Ace? What are you talking about? Have you been listening to us? Yeah. I heard everything. I just couldn't bring myself to talk about Klutzy's death. But now... This? Suggesting something so outlandish as Clutzy doing this to himself? I won't allow it! I'm s I'm sorry, Ace, but this is the truth. I can explain more if you want me to- You don't need to explain anything! This has to be wrong! Agent isn't listening. I'll have to make them believe this truth myself. Oh, this is gonna be good. I love Rebel Slowdown. Klutzy did this to himself? That's impossible! <laughs> You're telling me you picked up the recycling bin? And tossed it up under the conveyor belt? Not likely! Well, he was able to pick up that beach ball just fine. I think he 
could carry a recycling bin for a few seconds. Besides, the bin didn't have water in it yet. So even if he missed the conveyor belt, he still had plenty of chances to try again. It, it still doesn't make any sense. Do you even know how the test chamber works? After you pull the lever, the door and the conveyor belt move. So if the klutzy filled the bin with water, how could he have gone inside the chamber himself? The conveyor belt would have moved the bin back outside. No, that's wrong! Tofu, you never cease to amaze me. That was incredible. <laughs> All right, hang on. I need to take a drink of water. Oh, God. Aiden's gonna go full pelt now. <laughs> Maybe they're gonna take the blame. Agent Clutchy was trying to save you guys. It's not his fault. Ace, I know you've been out of it for most of the day. Did you happen to notice the cut conveyor belt wires in the gadget room? The what? Oh yeah, that's right. When I pulled the lever on the test chamber, the doors opened just fine. But the conveyor belt didn't move at all. Indeed. As soon as the conveyor wires are cut, the belt wouldn't move at all anymore. Klutzy's claw is sure sharp. It makes sense that he'd be able to cut those wires easily. So, after Klutzy pressed the water button on the test chamber to fill the recycling bin with water, he cut the wires to the conveyor belt. That way, when he put the lever again to go inside the chamber himself, the conveyor belt would move the bin back outside. N no! No, 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 no! This can't be it! I'm sorry, Ace. But this is the truth. Everything adds up. No, it doesn't add up. None of this makes any sense. Why? Why would Clutzy do this to himself? Tell me why! Ace, I'm sorry. I don't know why. But the evidence points to this being the truth. This has to be what happened. This isn't right. I won't believe it. Clutzy was my friend. We, we spent so much time together. We had so much fun with me. We understood each other. We loved each other. There's no way Clutzy would ever do something like that to himself. There's no way Clutzy would ever do something like that to himself. This is the truth. Oh God. Oh, but, but his scratch was healed. I know, but I think I figured out why it was there in the first place. Ace, Monobrute wasn't the cause of that scratch. It was Klutzy himself. His shell is sturdy, but his claws are very sharp. If there's anyone that could crack his shell, it'd be himself. No! That scratch has been growing, hasn't it? I think the Klutzy's been trying to do this for a while. Are you... Why? I actually didn't see that coming. I... I thought Monobelt was doing it. I'm self-harming. Why? I'm not sure. But it would appear that Klutzy was attempting to make himself bleed to death. And, well, once Gary healed the scratch on him, instead of starting over, he probably opted to find a much faster way to die. <gasps> oh my god! Uh, Alright. That's it then, isn't it? <laughs> that ace? I, I... I get it. This... This is the truth. <laughs> Let's see. Why did he do that? I don't know, Ace. And I'm sorry. We won't know why until we accept this truth. And that starts here. Ace, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Just do me a favor, please. Go over everything once more, one more time. Make absolutely sure this is what happened. Can you do that for me, Dot? Sure thing, Ace. I'll go over everything for you. Oh, that made me terrible bit. 
I didn't expect that. Oh, sorry. When I get emotional acting like that, it can actually get me. Oh. I didn't expect the scratch was klutzy. What was he trying to do? Oh, it was this. It's a sucker, I think. He was trying to win the game. Bless him. All right. <clears throat> the case begins some time ago, actually. Whenever it was that Klutzy decided to begin pinching his own shell. Thank you for Pats. For reasons unclear, Klutzy's been planning to take his own life by repeatedly pinching at his own shell until he started to bleed. Eventually, Klutzy's plan succeeded, and he was found at the ski village bleeding out. Gatsooks! <laughs> So Agent took Klutzy to Gary's igloo to get him fixed up. Gary gave Klutzy some first aid treatment, which would heal the scratch in his shell in no time as long as he got some rest. Rest. Teleport. Ah! Later at night, when Klutzy had been teleported back to the gadget room, he noticed that his scratch mark was completely gone. So he quickly devised a plan. Instead of slowly chipping away at himself again, he plotted to use the test chamber to freeze himself to death. Oh, he's so determined. He started by taking a recycling bin and tossing it up under the conveyor belt. Though it may have taken him a few tries. Whoosh. Once the bin was on the belt, Klutzy pulled the lever and pressed the water button on the test chamber. This would fill the bin up with water. Next, he cut the wires to the conveyor belt with his claws. That way, the recycling bin wouldn't move back outside the chamber when he pulled the lever again. Now, all he needed to do was figure out a way to press the snow button while he was inside the chest chamber. So to do this, Klutz used the supercorn from the Thingamabob 3000. Since Herbert was the reason Gary was studying the supergrowth formula in the first place, it's very likely that Klutzy was also aware of its properties. Ooh, pun! <laughs> Sorry, this is serious. <laughs> the main properties of the supercorn. I'm concerned of how much time is left on this. That's like, what, 25 minutes left? Oh, great. The main properties of the supercorn are popping into popcorn quickly, increased weight, as well as a tendency to land on a target when in the air. For a target, Klutzy used the light preserver. He set it on top of the snow button so the popcorn would funnel into it and push the button down. Woo! Splash. After that, all Klutzy had to do was activate the thingamabob, open the doors to the test chamber, and quickly hop inside the bin of water. It's a really long closing argument. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. After the thingamabob's crazy chain reaction was completed, the supercorn popped and flew towards the life preserver. Oh. The increased weight from the supercorn formula allowed the popcorn to press the snow button with ease, as well as knock the life preserver onto the floor. Oh, buddy. When Klutzy submerged in the water as the snow button was pressed, he was quickly frozen to death inside of a solid block of ice. As the night went on, the ice eventually melted. Oh. And one morning came, Klutzy's dead body was teleported outside the sports shop, where we all found him. This is the truth of the case. Sadly, the one who killed Klutzy, the ultimate henchman, was himself. I really like that art. That looks really nice. So what about the ball? <laughs> I was saying, I'm really gonna say that. Maybe he took the ball with him, I don't know. I'm sorry, Hayes. I'm so, so sorry. It, it's all right. It's like you said, this is the truth. The truth I need to face head on. Besides, I can't let all my friends die after Audi losing so many. We have to get the right answer. It would sure be a shame if all your friends had to die anyway. <laughs> Wait, you don't mean we were wrong? 
Ugh, sadly, no. You guys were right. The one who killed Klutzy was indeed himself. So wait, the motive you told us about was... Yep, that was just a lie to throw you guys off. That little dummy offed himself before I could even come up with a proper motive. Jesus. Why? Tell me why Klutzy did that! Hey, don't ask me. I don't know what was going on in this little idiot's head. Wait, do crabs even have heads? It's like it's not bono. It's alright, Ace. Maybe it's better for us not to know. I don't care how dark the answer is. I won't rest until I know why Clumsy took his own life. We'll help you learn the truth, Agent. For now, though, I think we should all relax knowing that we've made it out of another trial. Hang on. We're forgetting something. Huh? We are? I think I know. Are you wondering if there's gonna be an execution, too? Are oh, they just gonna execute Clutzy's body? <laughs> yeah. There's always been an execution after every trial. Clutzy is an angel. Angel crab. <laughs> but if Clutzy killed himself, that makes him the killer, right? How can he be executed if he's already dead? You're not gonna make a substitute, are you? What? How dumb do you think I am? Very. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Anyways, as much as I'd like to, I'm not allowed to simply just substitute one of you to be executed in Klutzy's place. So you're saying there won't be an execution this time? Oh, that's definitely a relief. Yeah, and it's a real shame, too. The executions are always my favorite parts. Stupid Klutzy. How can you have just gone murdered like a normal victim? <sighs> Is Agent gonna attack him? We've got... 20 minutes left. And if Agent stood there like that... I have a feeling that Agent... I'm gonna call this now. Agent's gonna attack him. It's gonna break the rules. And that's gonna be the execution. And if that's true, and Dot's gonna be like the new main character or something, which is not- I know it's not gonna be the case because Agent, you know, we haven't solved anything yet about Agent. Oh my god. Anyways, I still really want to execute someone, so you all better be on your best behavior. If I catch anyone even attempting to break any rules, I'll execute you on the spot. Whatever, clown. Can we just get out of here already? We've solved the case. I don't know what you're asking me for. You stormed out of here on your own accord, your own accord last time. Sorry, not really trying to risk getting executed, you know. Though it's not like you kept your rules consistent anyway. <laughs> 20 minutes of WWE Smackdown! <laughs> Why you- Ah, oh, just get out of here already! All of you! We all left the box dimension. The portal disappeared shortly after we all exited. I know today was hard, but at the very least it feels refreshing to come out of the box dimension without having to lose someone else. You're right, but... Poor Klutzy. Do you think we'll ever find out why we did that? I'd say that's our logical next step. We'll get to the bottom of that and then we'll uncover the truth of this entire killing game. Looks like... Oh, look, just be careful, all right? I don't think Monobert was kidding when he said he'd execute someone for even trying to break a rule. Don't worry, Sam. We'll figure something out. We're all going to work together to find out everything. But first, I think we've all earned some rest. Is it really okay to just... go to sleep now? Of course it is, Agent. You've had a longer day than any of us. I'm sure Klutzy will want you to get a good night's rest too, you know? I'd say that's certain. Good night, everyone. Everyone parted ways for the night. Ace, how are you holding up? I... I can't rest. I can't rest until I figure out why! It's Moonlight Sonata! No! It's okay! It's okay, Ace. Let it all out. It's my fault! <laughs> it's all my fault! Hey, hey, no, no, it's not! Ace, please don't blame yourself! Why wasn't I there for him? 
<laughs> if I just helped him more than just <laughs> maybe. Ace, Ace, calm down. You did everything you could for Klutzy. You took such great care of him. You loved him more than anyone else, and he loved you right back. If he loved me, then why did he leave me? I don't know why, Ace. But I know he loved you. I know that more than anything. How do you know? He, he probably hated me. I... Here, look at this. Huh? This is... Claire de Lune, not Moonlight Sonata, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is... Klutzy was holding this in his claw. He must have made it extra sure he wouldn't let go of it. Oh. It's a switch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Todd. I know. It doesn't make it better. But I hope it at least helps you feel better. It does. <laughs> It definitely does. <laughs> Anyways, I'm exhausted. Do you mind if I stay at Eureka again tonight? I don't mind at all. You definitely need to get some rest. Thanks. And, um, by the way, you do know that you've had some bedheads sticking up all day, right? What? Oh my god. Sorry, I was all emotional, crying and stuff. I just... I kind of noticed that, but I was thinking... Maybe I just didn't notice it before. It's... They've got the protagonist spike. <laughs> oh. That's genius. Oh man. I probably looked really dorky, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, a little. But it did help me smile a bit. Well, that's good at least. Anywho, why don't we get some shut eye, huh? We've had a long day. Oh, the Aho Gate. That's what you were all on about. We waddle over to Dots Igloo together. <laughs> that did make me tear up. Man, it's not gonna be easy to sleep tonight. I can sing you a lullaby again if you want me to. Uh, maybe hold off of that for a bit. Dot! Agent! What? What the? Gee, what are you doing here? Apologies for barging in, but it's urgent. Urgent? What's going on? The sports shop. It's unlocked. It is. Does that mean? Sadly, no. I tried all I could, but the doors to the PSA HQ are still locked tight. However, my office upstairs was unlocked. I logged into my computer when I saw something unbelievable. What did you find? What did you see? The fact that strong emotions can come from Club Penguin fanfiction is impressive hell. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Tova tomorrow, you've taken something so innocent and turned it into something so emotional. I'm going to finish this before I go off, but Jesus. You would believe me if I tell you. You've got to see it for yourself. If you could, please help me gather the others. Everyone needs to see this immediately. What is it? Don and I went around to everyone's igloos and told them to meet us at Gary's room. Right, we're not allowed to be emotional now. We've got to be serious. What the heck's happening? Ah, oh, Mrs. Kimita. Okay, good. You're all here. Asian said you found something important? Ooh, it better be important. I don't know what could have been more important than getting into HQ. But Dot said that was still locked. It's a video. Someone sent a video message to my computer. <gasps> a video? Uh, who sent it to you? You really won't believe me if I tell you. I can't take all the credit because, in my opinion, the Club Penguin characters and world have so much more potential for storytelling beyond just this little kids game. You know what? That's absolutely valid. Like... The mi I remember being so invested in the missions. Like, that whole arc was brilliant. And I missed Operation Blackout. I wasn't there for it. But, like, seeing the twist and seeing it come together that it was Antarctic all along was the director. And just how much they developed Herbert overall, it's just... 
Oh my god. But this is what I appreciate when people in the fandom take it and stretch it this much. And here's the thing, like, you've put it in this whole, like, murder setting, but you never really lost sight of who the characters were. Like, they're all still in character. So I still feel that innocence in a way. Sorry, I'm gonna keep playing this because, Jesus Christ. Uh, Alright, then play it. Yeah, sorry, I'm still a little shaken after watching it. Is he... Is it that bad? It's Agent O'Gary. It's hard to describe. It both answers and raises several questions. Just play the video, man! Right then, everyone gather around. Can you all see? JPG is kind of hugging the screen. <clears throat> Alright. What's going on? After everyone had a good view of the computer screen, Gary hit play. And the video began. I was there for Operation Blackout and honestly it was insane. No one really get why I was so invested in this kid, but Club Penguin as a whole is really seriously good. I wasn't there for the whole Blackout thing. I do remember the twist being revealed. And I thought it was genius. Like, oh, that, because that mystery had been built up for like a good 10 years, I think, at that point. That was really good. All right. <gasps> Ugh, is this thing recording? Why is the camera so fuzzy? Oh, is it Monobu? Oh, well, they only need to hear me. But hopefully the video quality will clear up. I have a message for the surviving penguins. <gasps> it's Herbert! This is Herbert P. Bear, Esquire. The monobert you have come to know is not me. He's a robot! <gasps> Don't believe his lies! Anyways, I'm currently in the wilderness, but I'm trapped in my underground base. And even if I wasn't, those dumb force fields are still in the way. Klutzy and I have been able to communicate with each other using the test bot's emergency broadcast signals. As you may know, I'm the only one who can understand his clicks. He told me that Monobert's AI is programmed to make up information that seems like it would make sense. Anyway, he's told you could have been a lie. Klutzy also informed me that Monobert's AI apparently has a limit. He's difficult to respond to things that he doesn't expect to happen. And then Klutzy proposed a plan to me. He'd go do something completely unexpected to confuse Monobert. That would create a breach in his security. While his AI is down, I will be able to briefly hack into his systems and have some control over his abilities using my computer. This would allow me to send this message to you without Monobert noticing, as well as something else, but you'll see them when they come. What? I'd go into more detail, but I'd like to keep this message as short as I can. I'm not sure how much time I have. Besides, if it all goes according to plan, I should be able to see you soon. I wasn't able to- I wasn't sure this plan would work. After all, Klutzy refused to tell me exactly what unexpected thing he planned, or he'd do. But if you're seeing this message now, then I guess this plan worked. That's the main stuff. There's a lot more you need to know, but I'll get to that when I actually see you guys. I know this is all probably seems crazy, and I know I haven't exactly gotten along with you penguins in the past, but I promise this is the truth. Please believe in me. In this situation, I am your ally. See you soon. He doesn't know Clutzy's dead. I... Uh, yeah, Gary's right. That actually explains a lot. And that really hurt my voice as well. <laughs> Jesus. This plot's just sickening now, mate. So Monoba is a robot who's been made by someone. Made with test bots. And they've locked Herbert away, which is why we can't get to the wilderness, because otherwise we find him. Well, that makes this a lot sadder, because now I feel really bad for Herbert. Because I thought, like, he'd been brainwashed or something here, but Jesus. <gasps> what? <gasps> uh, uh, uh. Mm. I see you're all reacting the same way I did. What the heck? Monobert's a robot? The real Herbert is on our side. Klutzy. Th that's why Klutzy... Damn it! You mean Klutzy sacrificed himself to mess with Monobert's AI? That must also be why he took so long to show up after we found Klutzy's body. His systems were down. 
Apparently, it's allowed Herba to send us something else, too. Gary, do you know what he's talking about? Not yet, no. But whatever it is, supposedly, they're coming. Oh. Carrie, I need to ask you something. I don't know if I'll have an answer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> God damn, who's the traitor? <gasps> Maybe it was Herbert. Ooh, it could have been Herbert. Oh, this is a big thing. Herbert said that he and Klutzy were using the test bots to communicate with each other, right? Ooh. Yes, the test bots have a communication function. It's mainly for them to use, but if others are nearby, their voices can be picked up. Wait, Dot. The wheel and Snowbot were located in the gadget room in the wilderness. Them, those must be the two robots that Herbert and Klutzy were using. That would explain why Klutzy was in the mines. In Chapter 3, right? That might be a stretch, but yeah. That must also be why those two robots were charging slower compared to the Jetbot. They were in use. Wait, what? You two know where the test bots were? Yeah, we found your robo locator deep in the mine. You what? How did it get there? We were kind of hoping you knew. Do you have any idea what happened to the test bots after we deactivated them two years ago? After they were deactivated, I dismantled them and just kept them around in case I needed more parts for gadgets. I thought they were still destroyed in the gadget room. Wait, what about the wheelbot? Is that one usually on display? Oh, yes. Admittedly, I think that one just looks nice. Still, there should have been no way for them to be reactivated. How could this have happened? Whoa, whoa, I know this is sort of a you-have-to-be-there kind of thing, but we're seriously out of the loop. No, there was a point where, like, Klutzy was there. Because Dot had already gone. And then, like, they went back and Klutzy was there. But I don't know, I'm a bit misremembering. Yeah, robots? Two years ago? What's all that about? I'm surprised these two aren't dead yet, to be honest. I feel really tight for saying it, but I was full of expecting these two to, like, take a hit. But again, I'm glad that, like, they, um, divert expectations. Unless Case 5 is gonna do anything with it, I don't know. Oh, right. You guys don't know. Sorry. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Alright, um, just gonna double check the audio real quick. Okay, so we stopped on you guys don't know. Alright, I'll go back. No, no, shh, 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 no spoilers. <laughs> okay, uh. Do, do, do. Oh, good, I get to redo that line that I messed up. <laughs> Alright, let's go. <clears throat> Steen decided to family guide death pose. <laughs> Alright. Oh, right. You guys don't know. Don't worry. I'm sure one of his agents will be happy to explain. Hopefully not me, because I sure don't remember all the details. <laughs> Ace, do you want to do it? You were the one who saved the day, after all. Uh, yeah, I can do it. This is the story of Operation Robotomy. Right. I was explaining before the stream crashed. Um, <laughs> I was explaining that I remember playing this, like, on the DS, and I remember, like, Gary disappearing, and I felt, like, really bad, like, I was just really worried for him. Okay, can this stream, like, actually be good quality? That'd be great. Let me just double check OBS, because I think it's dropped the quality of it. This stream was the real Chapter 4 victim. <laughs> God damn it. No, I saw that message. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll just have to do it fuzzy for now. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Alright, this is the story of Operation Robotomy. It's not just like Gary. <laughs> it all started two years ago when I, first, when I was first recruited into the EPF. As I was undergoing training, we received reports that Gary the Gadget Guy had gone missing. This part is just me lord dumping about the DS game. Hell yeah. I took matters into my- Also, I love this music. <laughs> I took matters into my own flippers and eventually found Gary deep on the ground with a lost memory. But that wasn't the end of the mystery. Strange things kept happening all over the island. 
Things like the boiler and the ticket booth were being stolen, and cans of oil were left behind in each crime scene. <sighs> we finally deduced that Gary's test spots were the ones behind all the trouble. The test spots were originally meant, made to endure tasks that were too difficult or dangerous penguins, but they became obsessed with overcoming crazy challenges. It's me, Agent on the Nintendo DS. It's me, Agent Ein the DS, speaking to you inside your brain. Listen to me, Agent. Leave the crab. We don't need him. <laughs> Sorry. Too soon. I like how the puffles keep appearing like the different ones. That's cute. After many tedious battles and with help from the elite puffles, I deactivated all three test bots using a device called the Robotomy Gadget. We thought that would be the end of it, but we were wrong. Shortly after, Gary and the Leap Puffles had gone missing. Before they were shut down, the test bots had been working on a project. Using one of Gary's old sketches, they built something that was never in what 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 sh 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 it was never what that was never intended to be created. Yeah, I remember this. Oh, the ultimate protobot ten thousand, a giant robot who was obsessed with power. He wreaked havoc across Club Penguin in search of new ways to upgrade himself. I remember, like, because remember, everything's 2D at point, this point in the game, and then this comes in and it's all 3D. I loved it. Ta da! Fortunately, we were able to deactivate him. Garrett, the Elite Puffles, and Club Penguin were saved, and we never had to worry about power hungry robots again. Until now. Have it sent a robot? Until now, it would seem. What the heck? Do you mean evil robots are attacking Club Penguin and we never even knew? Well, we try to cover these things up as best we can. Civilians like you shouldn't need to worry about this stuff. But Gary, you know we're- oh, never mind. Those robots were shut down, right? So why are they still active now? We're not sure. They had to be reactivated by somebody. Maybe it was Herbert? Could those robots be the they that he was referring to? No, it sounds like those robots have been charging for a while. The other mysterious thing after Herbert sending away could have only been oh, the other mysterious thing Herbert sending away could have only arrived after Klutzy's sacrifice. Well then, where is it? Shouldn't they have arrived by now? Yeah, where? Where the hell are they? Ace, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. Klutzy sacrificed himself today. I'm for what? Where's the thing Herbert supposedly sent to us? Hey, take it easy, Agent. We'll get to the bottom of this. You mean we're just supposed to trust Herbert of all people? She's been our enemy for years. I know, but what of a choice do we have? What about it's been a robot makes sense? Have you seen some of the crazy stuff he's done? Then why don't we ask Marver himself? We know he's watching us. He should come and clear this up right now. He still hasn't shown up yet. Then I'll just have to go find him myself! Uh-oh. But Monobot said he watches us from the PSAHQ, and the doors are still locked! I know. So I'm gonna break in. Oh! Agent's got the edgy back to the camera angle! Oh, they're gonna die. Oh, no. <laughs> but you can't do that! You'll get... I had made up my mind. I ran downstairs and grabbed the surfboard. Oh god! <laughs> oh, nature, no! Hey, stop it! I know you're upset, but... I won't stop! I can't stop until I know exactly why Klutzy left us! I need to know what his plan was! Oh, it worked! Oh, that's not good. It worked. Hello! Oh, that's not good. I thought I told you to stop trying to break into locked rooms. <gasps> I, I was just, I, I. You're not getting out of this one, bird. I said I'd execute one of you for even attempting to break a rule. I called it. <laughs> you mean you're gonna. <gasps> oh no. Silence. Not if you're going to intervene. Interrupting an execution is also against the rules. I'm going to enjoy putting an end to you. You've been a real thorn in my side since the very beginning. 
You... you can't be serious. God! Oh, shut up! You think you're invincible or something? Just because you sold all of these cases! Just because you screwed up my plans over and over! Huh? But... you're not really her, but... are you? You dare question me! Forget it. I'm putting an end to you right here and now. I still haven't been given any more information about you, so I don't have an extra special punishment prepared for you. What a shame. You'll just have to die a mediocre, forgettable, and unimportant death instead. Uh, they'll... they'll de defeat you. How ironic. He said the same thing. But enough of that. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I can't do this. I can't. No, don't kill Agent. Please fake this out. Oh, buddy. Oh, shit. Oh, he's thinking of what to do. Boom. Run him over. Nope. Aha! Oh, yeah, touch it! No! Oh, thank God! <laughs> What's happening? <gasps> What's happening? <gasps> no! That's who we were sending! The Puffles! Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> yes! Bouncer. Blast. Oh, Blast was always my favorite. Blast and Chub. Flit. Yeah, Flit as well. Yay! Oh my goodness, yes, 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 yes! Double shot. <laughs> Loop? Fruit Loop. <laughs> Yeah, kill him! Pop! <laughs> okay, I'm elated. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Ha! Deck him! Chop! Smash! <laughs> yeah, destroy him! Flare! Oh god, I'm actually gonna kill him. I forgot what the white puff is called. Chill, that's it. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, I like that little head movement then, that was good. Okay, this animation's really improved. Oh my god, squad. That's us, the EPF. Oh, come on! Surviving Puffles 8. Oh, snap. And that's it. So how long is the next video? Okay, when I said, when, I, when you said it was going to be that long, I thought you meant like two hours. This is almost four hours long. How am I supposed to do this in a stream? Okay, so next time we stream this, I might have to break this part into two because that is way too long. Well, not way too long, but you get what I mean. Okay, so in conclusion, I'm not okay. <laughs> Oh my Christ, I do not know what to say. Um. So yeah, Klutzy's dead. And the Puffles are here. That's brilliant, we've got the squad going. So I'm guessing the next one's gonna be like a big investigation to what's going on as opposed to like a death thing. Or maybe like there will be a killing. I, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a Scoobies. Because I'm trying to register all of this. Let me put some lo-fi back on. <laughs> I'm gonna see if there's some Club Penguin lo-fi. Uh, let's have a look. Oh my god, is there actually? Charlie's Pizza Parlor but lo-fi. Pizza Parlor ambience for one hour for relaxation. All right, let's try this. All 
right. Um. Sod it, let's just do this. <laughs> we need to alleviate the mood. <laughs> okay, so I... <sighs> Guys, <laughs> tofu... <laughs> Words! <laughs> to be dead ass, chapter 4, Deadly, is my favourite individual chapter in this series, and it'd be like that since I first watched the series back in December 2020. Eight new babies at the cost of one. Oh, Klutzy's really gone. Klutzy's a hero. Like, Klutzy got all the purples there. So that's the thing, it's like... Klutzy obviously didn't want to do it, but he wanted to help his friends. Oh, bless him. Oh, but there's so many unanswered things. Like, the mole. The fact that we've lost a chunk of our memory. The fact that we don't know who we are. Oh, my God. Chad Clutzy. But, yeah, um, that was really good. I really liked Agent's, like, breakdown on this. That was so well done. Um, The... The rebuttal showdown was really, really good. The anim All the art and animation has improved so much since the first one. Like, that last one was brilliant. But, mate, I, I don't know what to say. Can I send you some art on the PL Dub stuff? Yeah, go for it. You send me what you want. Yeah, that's, a, that's the thing. It's like someone who's, you know, written breakdowns like that before and like presented whatever breakdown. That was really well done. Like, it wasn't over dramatic. That was like a genuine reaction to grief. Like, they were shocked. It was traumatic. But what else? Um, I really liked, in terms of relationships, I love the Gary agent relationship that was built. I really enjoyed that. I love the build between agent and Dot. I love the lullaby. I really want to cover it. That was adorable. I love that there is rift with Rookie and JPG. Because hey relationship have rifts like sometimes you don't see eye to eye like like you said rookie's very goofy jpg's very serious it makes sense that they would put heads so i like that but i also like that you know rookie respected that he needed space and you know he didn't try to force the thing of like oh it's all gonna be okay he just acknowledged like okay yeah maybe it's not gonna be okay and like i'll let him cool off and i also like that gamma girl's apparently just an uwu lesbian now <laughs> that's brilliant and I like that Shadow Guy is just, like, there. <laughs> I like how supportive he is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's not irrelevant. Like, he's very, he's kind of, like, after Gadget Guy, Gadget Guy, yeah. After Gary, he's, like, kind of the brains. Like, he's very logical as well. I like his intelligence. Oh, I just, there's so much. I could write an essay on this, like, genuinely. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to register all of that. Oh, Klutzy. We're doing this for you, Klutzy. Also, I like how the grief in this kind of carried. Like, especially with Agent, like, you know, because they'd have moments where they'd cry. It's not a case of, like, because it's not like in Danganronpa where they're just like, ooh, hoo, hoo, okay, I'm fine now. But no, this carried. Like, they've been upset for the whole thing. 100 word essay by the end of the week. Mate, it's going to exceed 100 words. I'd be surprised if it wasn't kept under a thousand. <laughs> Alright, let me see this art. Oh, I want to draw so much stuff for this. Art oh, I drew last year. Oh! Oh, it's like human versions of them. That's really cute. I love the. I love you guys. This is incredible. Okay, so... In terms of when I'm going to stream next, um, I could try tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to try tomorrow. And depending how long we go, I might not do the whole thing. I might split this one into two because it is quite a lot. And, you know, I stop and pause a lot. But that's going to fill up two streams then before um, Deadly Life comes out. So, yeah, we'll see. You're really close to what is the end of the context. Oh, the content in YouTube. You might as well do the specials too. Except for the latest Halloween and Christmas, as they do contain content only from Instagram. Okay. Well, do you guys want me to do the extra content first, or do you want me to do, um, the, a uh, one? It's up to you guys. What do you want to see first? Penguin Romper is better written than the original Dungeon Romper games. You know what? It's eliciting more of an emotional reaction for me, to be honest. 
because what have I been mainly upset? The only one I was like really, really upset at, and it ended up kind of getting soured in the end because I just couldn't take the execution seriously. Um, I'm not going to say what it is in case of spoilers, but it was case four of Danganronpa V3. I'm not going to say who dies in it, but it was that one. That's the one that like really got me, but then any of the other... Well, kind of like case five as well, but like, you know, the others are a bit eh. Specials might be better since you'd have more time to process this chapter. Okay. Well, if any of you want to send me like a list of like what stuff there is and what order I should do it in, just DM me on Discord. That's fine. But yeah, um... Bloody hell. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go rest and try and process all of that. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow then. If there's any delays, I'll keep you all updated. But thank you guys for joining because this has been a stressful day. So I'm really glad we could um, chill out with this. Well, chill out is one word. <laughs> there's only one YouTube special that came up before chapter five, so I don't know if it'd be worth it. Okay, well, I'll do chapter five first and then when things are settled, we can do like all the other extra stuff. That's all good. All right, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow then. Have a good night. Bye. Love you. Ugh. Click for Klutzy. Yeah, that's where we're ending on. Click for Klutzy.